Hello, hello, hello! I'm going to be starting very, very soon. Hello to everyone in the chat. Thank you for all coming along. <laughs> now, the place where all these concepts are from um, is my Discord. Uh, so, I'm gonna leave a link in the chat, I'm gonna pin the link. Um, and you can always go along and post your concepts in there too. I'm not gonna be able to cover everything in the stream, um, but even regardless of, um, me reading them out, it's still a great place to share concepts and chat about that stuff to do with DBD, so. Um, yeah, it's, it's well worth checking out. There's a good little community in the, the DBD concept section, um, which uh, I think a lot of you would like. I'm just realizing now I can't post the link, never mind. <laughs> would anyone in the chat be able to post an invite link to my Discord? <laughs> and then I'll pin the link. And then we'll get started in a second, sorry, I just need to, I'm still prepping a few things. <laughs> Just jam out to the music for a bit. Alan Wake DVD concept. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it, it's very nice to see everyone posting ideas um, and just kind of discussing them and stuff like that. Yeah, it's really, really very cool. Thank you, thank you. I will pin that now. Um, pin message. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Oh, I forgot to um do a few things before starting. Um, it's okay. I'm. A I rushed a little bit. Um, before we started here. But uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. I promise. I promise we're getting there. <laughs> oh, sorry about the music there. One second. As you can tell, I'm a very professional streamer. Um. Okay, I wanna... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, give me a second. Uh... There we go, okay, we'll leave it at that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Alright. Um, stream, stream, stream. Why is the music going up and down the sound? <laughs> uh, okay, that sounds okay now. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, we're starting, we're starting. Um, uh, there we go! Look at that! I'm not sure why the chat is appearing so low down there. Um, hello everyone. Welcome to the chapter concept review stream, or not just chapter concept review, um, just DBD ideas review, I suppose, is, um, 
Oh wow, a member already. Um, thank you, Obs Obsitic, um, for becoming a member. Um, nice, uh, nice little alert there. Hey everyone, you know? Uh, um, <laughs> so we're going to be reviewing people's DBD ideas today. These ideas were all posted in the Discord, um, in the DBD, DBD ideas section. Um, and today we're going to be looking over a few. Um, I'm not sure what's happened with the chat. It seems to be a little bit broken. Hopefully it fixes itself. Uh, but yeah, hello everyone. The first one we're going to review is the, um, is this, uh, portal. Um, not portal chapter. I think it's just, um, a killer for this one. We're doing this one first because I said I would review it ages ago, uh, to the person who made it, um, KMD. And I never got around to it, and I feel really bad. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna start off with this one. It's also just very um, high quality, to be honest. Just call me Obi. Okay, I will just call you Obi. Thank you for becoming a member. Um, yeah, so we're gonna be starting out with this one. This is a portal. Um, uh, this is a uh, portal chapter, kind of. I'm not sure if it's meant to be a chapter or just um, a kind of a half chapter thing. But yeah, so that's what we're starting out with today, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, um, again, welcome in everyone. Um, it's really nice to see everyone here, um, and I hope you're all doing well. ASMR tearless when? I don't think that's going to happen. Maybe someday, maybe um, when I get really desperate. <laughs> Okay, so starting out, this is um, a concept by KMD. Um, so, chapter, question mark, portal. I think they haven't decided what they quite want for it yet. Um, and it's called The AI, um, or Carolyn Johnson is their like, real name. And this is, um, let me just scroll down a bit. This is actually um, GLaDOS from the Portal games, uh, who looks like this. They're like a, a very advanced... AI um, portal is <laughs> portal is set in the um, I think quite distant future. I'm not too sure how far ahead it's set, but it's quite far ahead. Uh, the portal games, um, but Glados looks like this. Um, she's very sort of um, sarcastic <laughs> and things like that. Um, and yeah, it's a very different type of AI to um, the Singularity, for example. But um, yeah, I, I'm interested how they want to implement it because I'm not too sure how it would like even work because GLaDOS is attached to this um this big kind of like pole thing when she's moving around. Um, maybe it's going to be to do with portals potentially, which would make sense, I suppose. Um, so let's start off. Uh, basics. So this is their like basic information. Name Caroline Johnson. Or Glados, I think that's like the main gonna be like the main killer name. Um, height, nine point six meters, and they've said downscaled in the realm. Like I, I was gonna say, that's gonna be like massive. Otherwise, um, let me just pull up like a. Oh, you probably saw some UK news there. Um, <laughs> let me pull up a, a video of Glados quickly, um, and you can kind of see uh, what she looks like uh, within Portal. Um, let me see if I can find this. This is kind of a good clip, just so you can see what she actually sort of looks like. Um, one second, one second. Uh, okay. So Glados kind of looks. She looks like this. She's like attached to this big kind of pole thing hanging down from the ceiling, and it's like this very advanced AI which runs the um, facility in the Portal games. Watching the stream, I am almost fully convinced you are not real. <laughs> oh? <laughs> oh? Um, hello, Eugene. Is this- no, it's just on YouTube, Big Enemy. Portal gun item. Hello, Polar. 
Hello, Andrew. <laughs> Welcome in, everyone. Thank you for coming along. Um, so yeah, that's what Gladys looks like. This is like her basic... I'm not going to read out like literally all of it, but they've put a lot of thought into, you know, what um, she's going to be like in the realm and like the specific um, parts of the character, I suppose. Um... And this is what this is, I like how they've done this too. They've included like um, a proper kind of um, icon for them here, which I really like. Um, I think that was made by someone else, if I'm right. Yeah, it was made by um, Springy, who's like a render person. I think they're in the DBD leaks Discord. Um, but yeah, looks very cool. I'll read out this part. Um, good morning, Mr. Squidward. <laughs> And uh, K drama, and Sasha. Finally, after 69 years, <laughs> Glados is a humongous piece of technology. In fact, it is probably the most advanced piece of technology a human created thus far. She is made up of several white pieces of metal connected to a giant piece of machinery, including cables and processors. Her artificial intelligence module is made up of several cores, morality core, curiosity core, intelligence core, and anger core. I believe in the games her cores do get messed with a lot because, or at least she has like a very low um, morality core I think. <laughs> in her old body there were white orbs attached to her body, now they, now they are inside of a chip in her, in her head. GLaDOS is attached to the ceiling, but since she's got into the Entities realm, her body is poking out of a blue portal. Okay, so that's how they're gonna uh, make GLaDOS work, is with a portal actually, and she's gonna come down from the portal. I was wondering about that, because obviously it's like a static character, um, but that's a cool way to do it. Um, the orange portal is in the killer camp. Oh, I see. So they're gonna be kind of hanging out in the realm, but then they drop down through a portal for the trials. So that's how it's going to work. That was the main question I had, to be honest. Um, how many of these concepts have you got to show? There's a lot of concepts. I'm just going to basically do my best to um, cover as many as I can <laughs> in probably the next uh, three or so hours, I would say. Depends how long uh, it takes for me to get tired today. Um, so yeah, moving on, cosmetics, that's nice, they've included cosmetics, the original, this is her old body, I didn't actually know that this was even a thing, um, and then Wheatley, if you've ever played the Portal games, um, you'll know that uh, Wheatley's a, a great character, and at one point during uh, Portal 2, he overtakes uh, GLaDOS's kind of position in the facility, and replaces her in the the main kind of like core thing. Presumably this would also change like voice lines and stuff too. So I don't know, that seems really cool. Potato GLaDOS skin, yeah, I, I would also like that. <laughs> Just make her a potato in the realm. So early in the morning. Where, where, what time is it for everyone at the moment? Because for me, it's it's about 1 p.m. It's not it's not too early for me. Um, this is their personality. Again, lots of thought put into it. It's really very impressive. Um, and yeah, they they've mentioned here that um she's taken before her character development. So in the Portal game, she eventually becomes kind of nice, or she joins forces with the protagonist of Portal. Um, so at the point of being taken here, she's pre those days of being good, I suppose. <laughs> um, GLaDOS would have the best voice lines, says Perfect. She she definitely would. <laughs> she, she has a lot of like voice lines kind of um, ready to go already. Yeah, it's really well made, isn't it? Um, a, a big enemy. 215, 816. 116 in the UK, yep. <laughs> 217. A fellow Brit. 115, yeah. 316. 1150 in Australia. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so now this is the main killer information for GLaDOS. Um, so 32 meter terror radius, that's pretty standard. 
4.4, that's on the slower side. That's more what um, ranged killers have generally. Um, okay, now we have the power. This is going to be kind of like the big part of the review, in fairness, because the power is generally the most important part of the of the killer, I would say. Um, so, the AI starts the trial with five tokens. She can place down a turret bot, consuming a token. The turrets will scan the area around them. They, the AI can't place turrets in a six meter radius of a generator. Okay, I, I'm assuming that's there to avoid three gens. <laughs> if a survivor enters the area in plain sight of a bot, they trigger killer instinct for three seconds, notifying her about their location. If the survivor moves too much, gets too close to the turret bot, or makes um, a loud sound, the turret will shoot marking bullets at them. If a survivor gets hit six times, their health state gets lowered. The marking bullets reveal the survivor's aura when they do any action. The effect lingers for three seconds. The marking effect disappears when the survivor is either hooked or after 30 seconds while being in the healthy state. So it seems like, it, it seems a bit like a combination of like Skull Merchant um, and Trickster, kinda, I would say. Like, you can place down turrets and then the turrets shoot out, like, bullets, marking bullets that, um, kind of ramp up a meter, which then reveals and injures them, I think. So it seems to be kind of, like, map control. It's like, um, yeah, I think like a map control power, kind of. Although I, I do wonder how obvious the turrets will be, because in the Portal games, the turrets are very, um, are very talkative, <laughs> let's say. <laughs> the turrets tend to talk quite a lot. You'd prefer this over Skull Merchant. <laughs> Singularity and Trickster. That's true, it's, it is actually quite similar to Singularity, I suppose, too, with the different uh, biopods available. Uh, one thing I would say about this, I, I think it, she should maybe have more than five... Yeah, I do agree. I think it'd be a little a little bit too weak. Um, so I, I think maybe like seven or something turrets, especially because I reckon the turrets are going to be fairly obvious because they're like these um, white kind of pillars um, if you've uh, played the Portal games. Um, and she also has a special ability, which is called Neurotoxin, um, which she likes to use a lot, again, in the Portal games. She likes to always try and kill you with Neurotoxin. Um... Turrets could also definitely have fun voice lines. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that's a that that's that's a, a thing with great potential there. Would her M1 just be a headbutt? I'm not too sure actually. I'm not sure if they mentioned that. Um, but that is, <laughs> that's interesting. I'm sure they could give her like a claw of some kind. The AI can spray a cloud of gas filled with neurotoxins three meters ahead three meters ahead of herself. If the cloud makes contact with the survivor, they will get slowed down by 0.5 meters per second for two seconds. Every time the survivor makes contact with the cloud, the speed reduction is increased by 0.1 meters per second. After the survivor makes contact with the cloud for the 10th time, they lose a health state and their speed reduction gauge is reset. Neurotoxin has a cooldown of five seconds. Okay, so that's like, if the cloud makes contact with Sly with a two seconds. So it's almost like a, a proximity like clown kind of slowdown, I think. But then if you if you um spray them enough times, you eventually damage them. So I think that's meant for more like anti-loop. That definitely does make the other power a bit more balanced out too. Like you're not relying solely on um your turrets for your ability. Three meters is very small in DBD. I do agree, but it is also a, quite a strong ability, I think, if you added even, say, like, an extra meter or two on. Didn't they say the weapon was Metal Claws? Oh, they might have done. Okay. For a four... Oh, true. <laughs> that is true, actually, uh, Starlight. For a 4.4 character, I suppose, three meters isn't too far. This sounds like Clown, Singularity, Skull, Merchant, and Trickster all in one. I, I do think so. I, th I think it's a, a sort of a combination of those. Um, but I think it, 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 it sounds like it would work well. Does it linger though? I don't think it mentions if it lingers. 
Um, I think it's- I don't think it does. I think it's just if it makes contact in the initial spray from the sounds of it. Um, yeah, but I think that's pretty interesting. <laughs> Moving on, we have add-ons. I, I probably won't go through all the add-ons again. Um, the nurse re-released how she was seven years ago. <laughs> if they if they release the nurse nowadays, I feel like she'd be received much differently. Um, like everyone would hate her. Everyone like kind of hates her now, but we're so used to her now um, that we're, we're kind of it's like a normalized thing, you know. Uh, this is for GLaDOS, uh, God Cow. <laughs> you think it sounds goofy, Raven? I, I mean, it, I mean, like, compared to, like, someone like Trickster, I don't think it is, really. I would actually like something like this, something that's, like, sort of, not directly horror, but is in sort of the same area, I suppose. I don't know. I would I would personally kind of like that. I think that's a cool idea. Um, but you know, obviously it varies. The main add-ons I want to read are going to be the they, they've written so many here. Like I don't want to just like brush over their work and stuff because they really did put a lot of effort in. Um, but I do also want to you know get through a few concepts too. Um, so they, yeah, they did a bunch of add-ons here. I, I'll read the iridescent ones because they're typically the most interesting. <laughs> What's her title? The yeah, it's the AI, which I do like as well. The portal. <laughs> uh, so the ultra rares, um, ultra rare iridescent portal gun. A glass-like, unusable replica of Aperture's greatest invention, moulded from the fog itself. Turret bots' bullets don't deal damage or mark survivors. Turret bullets caused exposed for 15 seconds. Okay, that would be so busted, I reckon, for kind of camping an area. <laughs> that would be really, really busted, I think. Um, I think this is just GLaDOS, uh, God Cow. I don't think they put Shell in there. Um, just yet, but they might do. They might expand the chapter potentially one day. Um, and then, uh, Weighted Companion Ashes. The most cruel task she gave her victims, it would scar them for life if they would survive. I think this is in, re in reference to the, um, one of the first things you do in Portal, which is destroy one of the companion cubes, and it's made out as this, like, really horrendous action, uh, where you destroy the cube. Um, Whenever a marked survivor's aura is revealed to you, you gain the undetectable status effect for five seconds. Okay, so that's like, a, I reckon that could even be buffed up, to be honest. Um, to like something like 10, so you could actually act on it, because there's a good chance, there's a good chance you're like quite far away at the time they get revealed, so yeah. Um... I feel like a character with a wholly unique ability like climbing walls, shapeshifting, or breaking the environment would cause too much backlash for not fitting in DVD. I don't know. I, I mean, I think the reason why we haven't gotten those things is more down to the fact that it's, like, technically quite difficult, I would imagine, um, rather than it being because uh, people wouldn't like it. At least that's what I think. Do they attack down survivors? I, I, I think the turrets would probably ignore you if you're downed, I would assume. I'm so lost, I came in here like a minute ago. Uh, we, are, we are reviewing a portal chapter currently, uh, Raven, made by KMD, and it's on uh, the character of GLaDOS, who looks a bit like this. I think it would break DBD not gameplay wise, but frame rate wise. Yeah, things like that. I, I think that's why a lot of restrictions are put on the powers, is because of things like frame rate. <laughs> um, okay, where did we get up to? Okay, now the perks. I I am very interested to see the perks. Again, so much effort has been put, in, put into this. They have all unique icons, they've done all like, the text properly, like with the formatting and stuff. It, it really is... Um, very impressive. Uh, 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, perfect creation. All the work that was made to create you was a great investment. Whenever you damage a survivor with a special attack, you gain a token. Each token reduces your perk times by 1, 2, 3 seconds. This includes effects and cooldowns. You can gain up to 5 tokens. Now that's quite powerful, I think. At least from what I, I'm understanding from it. Your perk times. Will you ever do this... Um, again? I, I'm, we might do a second part to the stream, uh, potentially. That one seems really powerful. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm reading that right. I think it works a bit like le like an, the opposite of Lethal Pursuer, so instead of extending like an aura effect, it, it makes your cooldown shorter, I think? Um, it would be good for some things, but then other things like, I don't know, like Oppression has like an 80 second cooldown, so knocking off 3 seconds isn't going to be doing much, you know, making it 77. Um, it sort of depends on the perks you run, I suppose. If you had, like, I'm All Ears on, maybe you could get some value from it. Um, I'm not too sure. I think it could actually use a buff now that I'm thinking about it. Dragon's Grip and Oppression would finally be good. I think I think it would be um, if, the, if the reduction was a little bit more. That means you can use Ultimate Weapon every 45 seconds instead of 60. I don't think it means that. It says each token reg Oh, each token! Okay, I didn't see the token part. Okay, so it can go up to 15 seconds. Okay, that does make them a lot better, admittedly. Um, yeah, I, I, thought, <laughs> I thought it meant just 3 seconds. Which I was gonna say, that's like, that really isn't too much. Um, yeah, okay, that is quite a bit. 15 seconds knocked off could actually bring you quite a bit of value, I would say. An eruption could go down to like 30. If you change seconds to percentages, that would be a pretty good shout, I think, um, Deveron. Would be to make would be to make this perk a uh, percentage based perk instead of a uh, uh, like a stackable sec seconds kind of thing. Um, percent would be more balanced. Yeah, I think so. Oppression is actually pretty good though, especially with surveillance, says Retro Hero. Um, I do agree, oppression is a good perk, but the 80 second cooldown is still, like, way too punishing on it. It's a little better now, actually, because of the, the new regression changes to generators. Um, when it applies the, uh, the skill checks onto other generators aside its own, um, it doesn't count as a regression event. Um, which probably actually makes it one of the better 3 gen perks in the game, to be honest, um, if you want to go that route. Even 3 seconds could be the difference between winning and losing a match. Yep, yeah, that is very true. Uh, perfect. Hello, Goof. Um, but yeah, that is very true. It has the potential to be very strong. The aura reveals would be 15 seconds. Yeah, very true. Yeah, it, it does have a lot of potential, I think. Um, if you if you got up to that five uh, five stacks, knocking off 15 seconds from a perk is is quite strong. Um, but then again, it's a it's a special attack. Um, so yeah, one thing I am noticing though, reading that, I don't think it would work for all the characters, would it? Because obviously not everyone has a special attack. At least I don't think so. I think there's a few that don't have a special attack. <laughs> How was the dentist? The dentist was okay. <laughs> um, they, they, uh, yeah, they, they said I had, they said everything looked good, but they did say I had to have a few fillings, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, thank you, Foa. Uh, welcome in, too. Uh, the 1v1 stream will hopefully continue on, uh, Tuesday next week. Yeah, there's a few characters I think who don't have special attacks. Unless, like, like for example, like, Singularity, does Overdrive count as a special attack? Like, when he hits an Overdrive? I'm not too sure. Um, anyway, let's go on to the next perk. So this is a Hex. Always like to see Hexes. That makes me happy to see. 
Hex loss aversion. You will make your puppets cry over anything. Whenever a survivor depletes their item, this perk activates, turning a random standing doll totem into a hex totem. All survivors have their generator repair speed reduced at 10, 20, 30 percent, as long as any of them has an item in hand. This hex is f this hex this hex's effects persist as long as the related hex totem is standing. Okay, so when a survivor depletes the item, it uh, it turns a doll totem into a hex, and then all survivors have their repair speed reduced by thirty percent if they have an item. Okay, I think that's balanced by the fact that it's only if they have an item. Otherwise, I was about to say, okay, that's like insanely busted. Like someone uses a toolbox and then it immediately applies like a 30% reduction to repair speed. That's not too bad though, um, if it's just for people with items. It's actually not that strong if it's just for items. Um, it is a very cool concept, isn't it, uh, Ultra? What does everyone think of that perk? I think that's that's like I actually think I could use a buff because, I mean, for for one, I don't think people generally use toolboxes too much, at least from my experience. Um, I do like it though, and I like the picture with the, the little companion cube in there as well. <laughs> I know a lot of survivors run items, but relying on survivors running items. And it being a hex seems a little too risky. Yeah, I, I tend to think the same. Um, it's a cool idea for sure, but I think the reliance on items is a bit... It's a bit too reliant on items, I think, is the thing. Uh, but otherwise, I think a, a, pretty, a pretty cool perk. It could even just not be a hex, I think, and it would probably be okay. You see a lot of toolboxes? What... What item does everyone see the most? For me, it's like, I get like 90% flashlights. I never see medkits anymore. Um, I see a few firecrackers. I see a, a few toolboxes, maybe. I never see maps. I never see keys. Would Franklin's work? I guess it would work. It is it is when they deplete their item, though. Um... But I guess it being on the floor could make that, could trigger that, so... Uh, yeah, potentially it could work with Franklin's. Would it work for special items like first aid sprays and syringes? I would assume not, because they don't have, um, like a usage bar like the base items do. Um, you see flashlights, flashlights and toolboxes. Asimovs, do you have any tips for how to get blood points fast in solo queue? I'm trying to get P100 on my Felix as fast as possible. Um, honestly, I would just say like, I know it sounds really obvious, but just run BP offerings. Um, try and play with try and play with friends or try and find a group to play with um, on Survivor and just stack like 400 times uh, BPs. That's like honestly the most efficient way. Um, or play a killer that rewards you with a lot of uh, BP and is easy. Like uh, I think I think Blight gives you quite a bit, and he's like very busted. Um, they need to be holding the items if Franklin's doesn't work. Ah, okay. Medkits are OP. Okay, th this is this is interesting because I watched the Otstava item tier list recently. And he said medkits were still very good, and I, I was really surprised to hear that. Because, in my opinion, they're like, they're not like bad, but I haven't considered them good since their uh, rework a while ago. So what does everyone think of that? Does everyone think uh, medkits are good still? Personally, I think the best item currently in the game is a flashlight. And I don't- <laughs> that might sound like- um, surprising, but honestly, I, I, I genuinely think the best item at the moment is a flashlight. Then then a toolbox, then probably a medkit, and then, then a map, then keys are pretty much useless nowadays. Unless you're running like the, the one that gives you the bond type effect, or the killer reveal effect. Medkits are OP. Okay, interesting. Yes, they can change the game quite a bit. I still see medkits quite a lot. Medkits are OP. 
Okay, Bacon Master agrees with me at least. <laughs> Everyone else disagreeing though. Um, make it have their moments, uh, especially if you bring the good add-ons, says uh, Bulky Quasar. That's understandable. I mean, there is still like, uh, what's that? Uh, what's the syringe one called? Hemorrhagic syringe, or anti-hemorrhagic syringe? From best to worst, toolbox, flashlight, medkit, key, map. See, I would put map above keys. I would maybe even put map above medkits, <laughs> which shows how how little I think of them nowadays, I guess. Maps can be underrate, underrated sometimes, says Neo. Maps can be good on against very specific characters, like, uh... I think, can they still reveal trappers' traps? Or is that... Maybe they remove that, I'm not too sure. If you were forced to join the Entities Realm, but were given a choice of choosing Killer or Survivor Side, which one would you choose and why? Says Jacob. I mean, if you're on the Killer side, you don't have to be eternally hunted down and potentially murdered. Um, so for that reason I would potentially choose Killer, but then I would feel horrible. Um, so I probably would go on the survivor side. Um, at least in that side you get to retain some of your humanity, you get to interact with other people, even if it's in, you know, a very small way around the campfire. So I'd probably say survivor. It would be a horrible experience, but, um, I think you'd retain more of your humanity as a survivor than you would a killer. Okay, let's move on to the, the final perk uh, that GLaDOS has. Um, and it looks like they've made a unique perk type, a new perk type, which is very interesting. Um, and it's called False Generator Fabrication. You push your agenda as long as it's needed. At the start of the trial, one extra falsified generator spawns. Ooh, very interesting. <laughs> I like that already. Um, it does not regress and can't be kicked. Its aura is revealed to you for the entire trial. It only takes 45 seconds to complete. Okay, interesting. So when it's completed, I do wonder when it's completed, does it count toward the exit gates or not? I, I assume it doesn't because it's like a false generator. Um, people are going to know though straight away if they start working on it because it takes 45 seconds. They're going to see, oh, this generator is going exceedingly faster than the usual generator. Um, when a survivor repa uh, finishes repairing the false generator, a real generator with the most progress loses 30%. Okay, see, I think this would work very well early on but then as soon as people are aware of the the perk um it's gonna be like really bad i think um because people would just find out like oh this is the false one don't work on that one you know it is a very interesting concept one thing i would say is i think if you change the 45 seconds to just be the regular generator length then they actually can't tell which one is real and which one isn't you know, maybe you can put like a small tell in there, but I think 45 seconds is a big difference from uh, 80, I think is the base currently. Um, so I think at the moment people would just kind of realize if they're on the false one. So I, I think altering this uh, this 45 seconds is uh, is fairly important. Maybe it could be like a slightly different speed, like it could be like a 70 second generator. So you'd be able to tell, like, the very slight difference, maybe? But I think 45 seconds is way too big a difference. You would just, you would clock that pretty quickly, I think. Um, but other than that, I really like the idea. It's such a cool park idea. Um, 90, is it 90 seconds base? Really? I didn't, I'm, okay, I'm going off of uh, old stats, clearly. Base is 90, it was changed in 6.1.0. Is it really 90 seconds? Wow, that's why it, it takes so long. Solo queue uh, on gens. Damn. 90 seconds. Yeah, so uh, this is a uh, half the speed. So a double speed generator. Again, you'd clock that so easily, I think. 
Um, maybe make the false generator 80 seconds or 85. So again, for like the people who are very... Um, Maybe 80. So for the people uh, who are very, like, knowledgeable with this stuff and can... They'll be able to identify that very slight difference and be like, Oh, this is the fake one. Don't work on that one. You know? Um, yeah. I, I, I think that would work a little bit better than... I, again, I think 45 seconds is, is just far too obvious, basically. Um, but I, again, I love the perk concept. Very, very cool concept. Really, really, very cool. What does everyone think of this one then? Uh, the false generator. I would again. I would love this kind of um, new perk type to come in. There's only so many things you could do with it, but this kind of idea I just think is is so awesome. I, I would love if they started introducing things like this that kind of have uh, curveball deception effects. I don't know. I really love stuff like that. <clears throat> Um, we've just done this one so far, Kyle. It's okay, would pair well with Deadlock. Could always use something new in the game. Yeah, definitely. Um... Oh, hello, Radium. <laughs> Uh, I have a concept, but I don't have fancy visuals for it. Um, I probably will do it again, uh, Aki. And also, uh, welcome in as well. <laughs> nice to see you here. Subnautica is one of my favorite games, so... Uh, <laughs> I've, I've checked out a lot of your videos, they're very good. Hello, uh, L3. Welcome in. Yeah, I, I, again, I love that idea of the false generator, though. Very, very cool. Really, very cool. Um, oh, these were the flavor texts. I missed those out. Um, but yeah, these are all... I think these are all quotes from the games. That's a big one. The cake is a lie. Um, but yeah, very cool. <laughs> um, then they did voice lines, too. Again, they really put, like, so much effort into this. It's, it's really very impressive. Um, yeah. Let me move the chat a little bit. One sec. Uh, I'm not sure how I make it smaller. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll move it like that. That's better, I think. Um, yeah. Again, they did like so many voice lines. Uh, so many voice lines. It's it, it's really so impressive how much effort they put into this. Aki, I know that guy. I watched that dude. <laughs> Um, uh, didn't know he likes DBD. Well, there you go. <laughs> so much effort. It, it, okay, yeah, it really is so much effort. It, it's, it's very impressive, I think, how much effort they put in. Um, okay, so now we can read the backstory. This is like the lore, I think, um, of the character. I'm not sure how much they've just like kind of reference from Portal, or how much they've kind of written themselves. Um, so yeah. Uh, we can take a read, though, and uh, see what the they've cooked up for the backstory. There's a surprising amount of overlap between DBD and Subnautica players. Really? That's very interesting. Um, but yeah, Subnautica's my favourite game. I, I love that game so much. Um, I still need to finish my hardcore playthrough of it, but uh, it's on my other... PC, and I'm not sure where I like saved it, so I gotta retrieve that someday. I'm like halfway through building the rocket. <laughs> um, Overwatch uh, is also another big one with overlap. Uh, like when Overwatch 2 came out, there were a bunch of people in uh, my Discord who were playing lots of Overwatch as well. And so I think we have a big over overlap with the uh, Overwatch community as well. Subnautica chapter? Ooh. <laughs> They'd have to make all the maps like flooded or something. Um, this is just on Google Docs um, that they've done it. I'm not sure how they made all the images and stuff, uh, but this is just Google Docs. I came from Overwatch to DBD because Overwatch 2 sucks. <laughs> 
Yeah, it, w it was very... Overwatch 2 was very good, I think, for the, the opening months. Um, it was a lot of fun. Uh, but it, it just felt like it trailed off a bit, I think. Um, okay, sorry, we'll, we'll, read, we'll read the backstory now. So, again, anyone just joining now, this is a, a chapter concept by KMD um, for GLaDOS, who looks a bit like this from the Portal series. Overwatch 2 sucks, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jaws in DVD would be wild. It, it would be. Interesting, uh, but very wild indeed. Okay. Caroline Johnson. What does this mean? I've never seen that before. Is that like an abbreviation for something? Does anyone know what that means? Um was born on 4th of January 1955 in Salt... Does that mean state? I'm not American, so I don't know these things. I think that's an abbreviation for state. So Salt State, uh, Marie. Her parents weren't really supportive of her passion for new technology, but they didn't stop her from achieving her dreams. She finished university and started working in a small company focusing on research on mechanical shower curtains. There she met a man who would change her life forever. Oh, what's he called? Cave Cave Johnson, I think, right? It means born. Okay, thank you, Vlad. I did not know that. What, what does it actually stand for? Huh, okay. It's French for born. Oh, her last name was Anka before marrying Johnson. Ah, I see. So it's like a, a maiden name. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, that is Gladys's real name, yeah, she's called Caroline Johnson. Genetic life form and disk operating, operating system, or shortly GLaDOS, was a, sh was a project started by the founder of Aperture Science Innovators called Cave Johnson. He wanted to create a perfect artificial intelligence which he could later use to cheat death. The works were going on for years, during which Cave happened to get sick of moon rock poisoning. On his deathbed, Johnson asked for GLaDOS to save the life of Carolyn, with whom he was in a secret relationship, um, uh, where they had a daughter. This meant that her mind and sentience would be transferred to the AI, but her memory would be gone in a big part. Um, GLaDOS was activated on a Bring Your Daughter to Work day in 2003. The AI quickly took control of the entire facility. Her sick desires caused her slaughter to almost everyone inhabiting the facility. The outside world ignored the event. Um, it was for only one reason. Aperture's rival company, Black Mesa, fell victim to an invasion of unknown creatures. This is uh, referencing... Uh, what are the games called? Half the Half-Life games. This is referencing the Half-Life games. Um, they're in the same universe, if you didn't know that. Um, there's really cool videos uh, going over like the timelines of both games. Um, but yeah, that's referencing the, the Half-Life games and uh, what happens there. Um, the event would be later called the Invasion of Earth. GLaDOS was satisfied that her actions went under the radar. She would now be in full control of Aperture, um, which with the elimination of Black Mesa due to the War of Civ uh, Civilizations became the number one contractor for the Department of Defense. Although this didn't mean that it would stay like that for a long time. One of the survivors of Gladys' genocide, test subject Shell, happened to survive the incineration procedure after finishing test chamber 19. So this is uh, referencing the main character of Portal. Thanks to the writings on the service room walls written by survivor scientist Doug Ratman, and went to confront GLaDOS. The AI's four personality cores have been destroyed, and the robot has been slain. But that didn't happen. GLaDOS's body was in fact destroyed and thrown into the parking lot, which would have not happened to be visited for a while, but the AI still survived. 50,000 years have passed. Is it that far in the future? I did not realize Porter was 50,000 years in the future. I knew it was like, in the future of course, I didn't realize it was 50,000. I must have missed that part. That's a long time, damn. Anyway, um... Shell held on... Oh, hey, hey everyone. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for the membership, 11 months. 
11 months and uh, 15 months for us soon. Um, yeah, that's my partner, uh, by the way, who just uh, became a member. <laughs> um, uh, a personality call called Wheatley traveled to the Apertures Enrichment Center. The robot accidentally woke up um, a backup body for GLaDOS, in which the AI has been living for a long period of time. She crushed Wheatley with her metal claw, snatched Shell, and went back to putting her into tests. Wheatley wasn't actually uh, deadly crushed, it only got him damaged. The personality core hacked into the building and freed Shell from one of the, ch from one of the test chambers, and after destroying the neurotoxin tank and the turret factory, they went to confront GLaDOS. Okay, so now we're entering just like this is this is basically just recapping the the portal 2 campaign now As he says hello to Azzy, it says hey everyone, I know hey everyone, hey everyone <laughs> In the beginning of portal an AI says she slept for nine 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 Yeah, that is true, but I, I think I'm not- I think that's refer- that's like the amount of minutes she slept, I think? I'm not entirely sure, but I think so. But that is true, yeah, when you- let me- let me get a clip of that, because that's- that's- that's just such a good opening clip. Portal 2, by the way, is- is such an amazing game. Po both portals are great, but Portal 2, um, is- is just such an incredible game. Um... Let me find, see if I can find a clip of it. Uh, it's a, it's a really funny game. It's a it's a great like puzzle game. It, it, yeah, it's really just a very good game. Uh, let me see. Mentally reinvigorate. If you suspect ceiling in compliance with state and federal uh, periodically. Why does it say it? Hello. Okay, so this is when you wake up in Portal. This is from Jane Doe. Good morning. You have been in suspension for nine, 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 nine. Hello? Anyone in there? So yeah, it doesn't. It's not. It's not like very clear how long it's actually been, but it does say nine, 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 nine for the amount of time you've been asleep. So it's like a very long time, probably. <laughs> Um, uh, Danger Squid, you can post your concepts into the into the Discord, um, which is pinned, uh, which is in the pin comment. Okay, so um, Caroline happened to set up a trap with uh, for the test subject, which didn't work out since her weapons were useless in the state Wheatley and Shell put them into. The personality core freed the human from her trap, and the confrontation began. Sadly for Glados, the computer system in her chamber detected a personality core different from hers. Um, thinking it was time for replacement, it asked both cores for approval. Wheatley said yes, GLaDOS said no. This activated the stalemate procedure, which could enforce a core swap with the press of a button. Shell rushed and pressed it, starting the core replacement process. GLaDOS has been lowered into a giant hole in the floor, causing a giant wave of pain which hurt her, despite the fact of being a robot. GLaDOS yelled out her begs of mercy, but they weren't listened to. Wheatley became the new leader of Aperture Science Innovations. Seeing that now he doesn't need Shell, he threw her into a bottomless elevator shaft to her demise. GLaDOS, not expecting to see anything since she was dead, opened her eyes, which quite shocked her. She wasn't in her chamber, at least not in the one from um, 5210. She was back in 2010, to the time before Shell destroyed everything she had. But something felt different. Through the doors to her chambers, a thick fog set in, and a whisper went into GLaDOS's microphones. Whatever it was saying, it wasn't words, but GLaDOS understood it. She understands everything. She she knows everything. She is the future. She is science. That's the law. That's, uh, I think that's very good. It laid out the story well, established everything really well, um, did a little bit of portal recap here. Um, and I like how she entered the realm, that's good. She gets defeated in Portal 2, she falls down, she gets taken. That does also mean that, canonically, the GLaDOS in DBD wouldn't have been a potato at one time, which is slightly disappointing. Um, but yeah, really great. Um, and that leads us to the end. 
um, and they put some credits here. So the GLaDOS in menu render was by Simon Hendrickson, and the portrait was by Springy. So yeah, that's a. I think that's like such an incredible uh, concept overall. Honestly, just like so great. Um, so yeah, that was the um, GLaDOS concept by uh, KMD. So thank you for submitting that KMD. Um, and I'd recommend checking that out too over in the Discord also. Um, yeah. I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, I like that too, Retro. Yeah, she doesn't know if Shell survived. That's really cool, yeah. Yeah, we'll go on to the next one now. Um... Oh, I got rid of the list. Where did I put the list? Okay, one second. I'm going to put on the Be Right Back screen, and I'm just going to bring up the next... Um, uh, the next uh, concept. Two seconds. Um... Ah, yeah, okay, so there was like sort of a, a string of concepts that I wanted to cover. Um, they're very, very cool. Um, give me just one second to find them. Um, let me see. Um, 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 um. It was by Tofamovs. I'm just struggling to find where it was posted. Aha, here we go. And these ones are really great because they, they did little drawings to accompany them, which is very nice, I think. Um, Okay, does that appear okay? One second, let me move the capture over to here. I might have to zoom it in a little bit actually too. Um, so yeah, this person's done a string of really cool concepts. This is a concept by uh, Tofamovs. Um, that's the pro- oh, you can't actually see the full profile. Um, but basically what they've done with these concepts is they've taken um, they've taken the um, killers of the game and they've turned them into survivors, which is a concept I've always really loved the idea of, of having like different multiverse versions of what the killers could have been like as survivors. Um, um, so yeah, honestly really cool. Um, so they've done little drawings here too, like this is uh, the Trickster concept, if he was a survivor. This is like Trickster as a survivor, I don't know, I, I thought it was very, very cool. Um, they've also done ones with like, Claudette as a killer. Um, this is Huntress as a survivor. It's, oh, it's just very cool. It, I, it, I appreciate like adding the drawings in, um, it's definitely nice to do that. I thought we'd read the Trickster one. Um, So yeah, let's uh, read it. Um, before we read it, I'm going to go to the toilet quickly because <laughs> I really need to. Um, I'll be back in two seconds. For now, you can just uh, check out the nice pictures there that Tofamovs has done. Um, I'll be back in like uh, about a minute.
All right, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, is the background music from Mass Effect? No, this is all from YouTube Audio Library. Um, yeah, it's not from any games or anything. Um, how's everyone doing? The art, the art is very cool, isn't it? It really is very cool. Um, so we're gonna read through the the trickster one um, right now. Again, concept by Tofamovs, or uh, I think they're called Tofaruni, is their actual Discord name. Um, okay, so Jibun Hack is a prideful pop star with his perks VIP access, encore, and end of the show. He is able to temporarily Im uh, impede the killer, performing daring moves and staying hidden at the end of the trials. Demogorgon as a survivor. <laughs> That would definitely be interesting, wouldn't it? That does- that's- that is honestly a good question, like, do you think they'd ever introduce a, a non-humanoid as a survivor? Because they said they would never do it for killers, either. But then it happened. So I don't know, very interesting. Oh, that's cool, welcome in, uh, Jonna. Um... Okay, so this is their lore. We'll read through his lore. So again, this is like Trickster if he was a survivor. Let me just move the uh, uh, chat there over to here. Um, this is Trickster if he was a survivor instead of um, a killer. So it's going to be like a slightly altered version of the lore we have at the moment, I think. Um, every performer has humble origins, regardless of their destined greatness. And um, re regardless of their destined greatness, and Jiwoon Hak is no exception. From a young age, all he desired was recognition and fame. His talent for showmanship helped his family um, helped his family restaurant thrive, as he entertained gullible tourists with his knife throwing skills. Recognizing his potential, Jiwoon's father used the restaurant's earnings to support his son's dance and vocal lessons. Despite his hard work, Jiwoon re remained unknown, constantly overlooked in talent shows, but he refused to give up, knowing he deserved to be known worldwide. When Yun Jin Lee, a producer at Mighty One Entertainment, recruited him for her training program, Jiwoon saw it as divine intervention. Training was grueling, but Jiwoon per uh, persevered, learning the art of performance and how to appeal to brands and audiences. He was eventually selected by Yun Jin to join the band No Spin, where he poured his raw energy into their tracks. Fame came crashing in, with interviews and adoration showering Jiwoon. However, he secretly desired a solo career and expressed his concerns to Yun Jin. Yun Jin's response was cold and unreadable, telling Ji Woon that No Spin was nothing without him, but she could, but uh, she would consider his request. During the recording of the latest No Spin album, a fire broke out, trapping Ji Woon's bandmates inside. As he rushed to save them, Yun Jin pulled him away, leaving his bandmates to perish in the flames. Oh my God. Um, devastated, Ji Woon mourned the loss of his bandmates. But Yunjin never gave up on his career. She positioned him as the grieving idol, capitalizing on the tragedy. Jiwoon's solo career took off, with his songs resonating with fans worldwide. However, uh, however, with each performance, a string of eccentric murders occurred, overshadowing his success. Jiwoon's concerns were noticed, and Yunjin increased his security. I'm getting the feeling that. In this version, Yun Jin might be the killer, and Trickster is like, is the, um, in Yun Jin's position, I think is what's happening, but we'll see. Back in Seoul, Ji Woon cho chose to be more involved in producing his own music, incorporating some of Yun Jin's original samples to honor her, but as the murders continued, Ji Woon discovered a shocking connection between the voices of the victims and Yun Jin's music. Suspecting she may be responsible, Jiwoon felt trapped, knowing that exposing her would mean the end of his career. He swallowed his suspicion and left it alone. Yeah, I, okay, so I think in this version, Yun Jin is like, um, is gonna be like the killer, essentially. Months later, Mighty One blamed the trickster's violent music for the uh, decline in revenue. Jiwoon was devastated but couldn't speak out against Yunjin, fearing the consequences. 
He was given a chance to save his career with a private show for the board members. He was ready to put on the performance of his life, but on the day, Yunjin's true nature was revealed. She had bound the board members and tormented them, demanding him to sing and dance, and showed her what he was made of. Swallowing his fear and anger, Ji Woon performed, concealing his true concealing his true emotions while witnessing Yunjin's sadistic actions. The realization that his music thrived on human suffering disgusted him. As the show ended, Ji Woon confronted Yunjin, throwing knives at her in a fit of rage, but she merely endured it, too lost in the moment to feel the pain. Dead by daylight into the dead by daylight verse, yeah. <laughs> Suddenly a black fog engulfed this, enveloped the studio, uh, transporting him to another place. In the darkness, bright lights blinded him, and the crowd cheered for the trickster. With a smirk, Ji Woon embraced his fans, willing to give a good show, and vowing to give it his all in the performance of his life. The show must go on. Okay, so I think that's a really good deviation from uh, Trickster's Law there. Um, it keeps like enough intact, but then it kind of flips it and make Yun makes Yunjin the killer. I really enjoy that. I think that's a, such a cool idea um genuinely really really cool concept and again really nice they include the little drawing you know you can see the survivor version of him um okay so now we have the perks oh a boon very nice boon vip access your privileges allow you to enter areas other areas others cannot press and hold the active ability button on a doll or hex totem to bless it and create a boon totem when the killer performs a vault within the boon's radius, the vault location will be blocked by the entity to the killer for 25 seconds. Okay, that's a very interesting way to flip it. So this is like, well, I think this is basically hex crowd control, um, but just for killers. Is crowd control a uh, um, trickster's perk to begin with? It is, isn't it? I think these perks are all going to be like flip versions. That is cool, but that is very powerful. Although with that said, it's only in the boon's radius, so it wouldn't be too bad, I think. It does sound very strong, but I don't think it would be that bad. What does everyone think of that one? I think that one, has again, has the potential to be very strong. So this ultimate alternate universe boons came to the game early. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. They always uh, swap the perks to fit the other role. Ah, okay, I see. Yeah, I do like that though. Um, Encore. After performing a safe unhook uh, three, two, one times, Encore activates. When the killer picks up another survivor while Encore is active, you gain the Endurance effect for the duration of the survivor being carried and 20 seconds afterwards. Encore has a 60 second cooldown. Um, performing a safe unhook? Is that like borrowed time? Am I missing something there? Oh, when they pick up another survivor, never mind. So it's like borrowed time when someone gets picked up, I think. So again, it's like kind of the opposite of Starstruck. It's like protecting you when someone gets picked up instead of exposing the survivors when picking a survivor up. Um, I have played the Doom games, Neo. Um, I didn't particularly like... I, I tried playing Doom. I, I, it wasn't really for me, I think. Um, the first Doom. I just found it very boring, the gameplay. I don't know. Um, I did try it out. I gave it a shot. I don't think it was really my thing. <laughs> Maybe I'd revisit it someday, but um, I'm not sure for now. Um, end of the show. Oh, <laughs> he better have a shirtless skin. <laughs> These are the comments on the post. <laughs> um, end of the show. Um, for each survivor you heal, gain a token up to five. Once the last generator is completed, the perk activates. For each token, you gain the endurance effect, and your scratch marks and pools of blood are hidden for t uh, 8, 10, 12 seconds. Okay, they, they all seem pretty good to me, I think. Overall, I think it's just such a cool concept. I really love the idea of flipping the current versions of the characters and it being like an opposite version of them within the multiverse, you know? Um, 
yeah, I really enjoy that stuff. Again, there's more of them here, like the different killers. They've written so many of these, with all the lore and perks too. Again, I would really recommend going over to Discord and checking them all out. Um, we could do a whole stream just on these concepts, probably. Um, but yeah, genuinely really very cool. Um, yeah, okay, so moving on to the next one. Um, I'll just put up the Be Right Back screen real quick, and I'll pull the next one up. The next one was a Stranger Things related one, which I thought would be cool to look at. Um, give me two seconds to find it here. Um, where was it? Here it is. Okay, and this was a concept by uh, Dweet, which you probably you probably know who uh, uh, probably know Dweet. Um, they're the person who uh, posts about leaks a lot. Um, you've probably seen them in like Schmuckles videos and stuff. <laughs> things like that or just in, on Twitter in general um, and yeah so this is for a, a Joyce Byers character for Stranger Things so that's the nice little picture there nice little artwork I'm not too sure oh concept made by Dwee and um, Nico Silly Art so there you go looks very cool though um, and we have the lore here which we can read now let me just move that over um, oh, one second, we might have to just do that a little bit. Okay, so this is the law. Let me remove the chat for a second too, just so you can actually see it. Um, okay, a hard-working and devout, uh, devoted mother, Joyce tried her very best to give her boys a stable and loving home free from the pain of divorce um, they'd endured for years. She worked overtime to make ends meet, uh, but more hours at work meant losing out on time with her kids. The routine settled and it was um, and it was day in, day out of the same schedule over and over. When she woke up that morning, there was no reason to expect any different, but her life had flipped upside down during the night and she was only yet to realize it. The days following were the hardest one she'd ever experienced. Not only did nobody believe what she was seeing and hearing, they had already accepted her son was gone for good. Every ring of the telephone set her heart ablaze, and she could feel the air around her shifting as if he was there, hiding in the shadows and hoping to be heard. Never had she felt so helpless, yet filled with, de yet filled with determination to do something, anything that could bring him back. Um, after learning the truth about Will's body from Hopper and of his whereabouts from his friends, Eleven gave her a brief connection to let him know she was coming. Everything she was being told surround um, everything she was being told sounded stranger than fiction. Strange because stranger th what it doesn't matter. Um, but she couldn't deny what she had seen these past days. How close, but so far she could feel he was. Hopper took her to the Hawkins lab. Quickly off topic, I would really love if they did do a Stranger Things 2 chapter, they did Hopper and Joyce as the characters. I think that'd be really cool. Anyway, um, um, Hopper took her to the Hawkins lab where they were stopped by personnel and advised against entering the strange glowing portal, but nothing could stop the force of a mother trying to keep her baby safe from harm's way. Both suited up and slowly entered into the portal, viscous slime covering them as they stepped foot into the other side. Their flashlights illuminated the webs of flesh-like substance that covered the surfaces of places that seemed unnervingly familiar to the pair. Reaching the streets above, they didn't rip. Uh, reaching the streets above didn't rid the sense of claustrophobia that the underground. Oh, nice little per perk reference in there. <laughs> um, that the underground complex brought on, uh, but they were one step closer to Will, and that gave them some peace. When they neared the buyer's house. Joyce's head snapped back, hearing a distant screaming, cries she could hear, cries she could point out in a crowded arena. Without thinking, she was running straight towards where it was coming from, dizzy from the rush of adrenaline pulsing through her body. The scream sunk deep into the thick forest surrounding the house. She couldn't catch up no matter how fast her legs tried to take her. 
uh, um, and they grew weaker until she finally fell onto the wet forest floor. The screams had multiplied, coming from every direction and reverberating off the trees, while a dark fog rose up and engulfed the lone, sobbing mother. Wow, that's really depressing. <laughs> very, uh, very well written, though. Um, as the screaming faded, a hush promise closed them out. I'm coming, Will. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Uh, yeah, very good. What did, what did everyone think about that? <laughs> I, I would really love um, if they did introduce more Stranger Things characters, though. Um, will this VOD stay up on the channel? It will do, uh, Grom. Hello, Ellen Ripley, too. A very well done lore, yeah. It really is very well done. Is there a hopper skin in the game? There isn't at the moment, Hugh, but uh, there should be. <laughs> Good lore? Yeah, I think so too. It's very well written, yeah. I think they captured the character well. Um, I like how they sort of recap the story. It didn't feel too, like, um, repetitive or anything. It was a good, good recap. Um, and they've also done some perks here. Um, hopefully you can see them. Maybe I can sort of zoom it in a little bit. Uh, if I do this, I can kind of move them down. And they've done, I like how they've done the perks too. Look at that. They have like a, uh, the layout all, uh, properly done and whatnot. Um, you're late. Oh, hello KMD. Yeah, <laughs> we finished uh, the, the GLaDOS uh, review a little bit ago, but everyone liked it a lot. Lots of positivity. One day it will happen for sure. I do hope so. Um, okay, so... So, again, this Joyce Joyce Byers concept, uh, Stranger Things uh, chapter. Maternal cooling. A mother will do anything it takes to protect their child, even if it means sacrificing themselves. While healthy and within 10 meters of an injured survivor, maternal cooling activates. The injured survivor produces no grunts of pain or, um, or sickness. Oh, I like that. So it counters plague. That's pretty nice already. Um, and leaves no trails of blood behind. You take on any injured noises or blood trails this survivor would make. Ah, that's very interesting. I like that. It doesn't just remove them. Um, this effect lasts for five seconds after the survivor has left the designated area. Okay, so when you're close by to an injured or sick survivor, you can take on the sounds of their sickness or injured noises um, and put them onto yourself. So it's a bit like Babysitter, kinda, in a similar sort of fashion there. Um, but yeah, that's very cool. I like how it can take sickness as well. Um, that makes it like quite like unique in that way it would be like a, an interesting counter to plague I think but it doesn't completely counter obviously because you're just taking the sounds um, but yeah very cool I like that one what does everyone think of that one uh, hello DBD person welcome in you can tell the concept is old because it says level 30 to 40 um, I'm not sure when it was made maybe it was made a a little while ago. I mean, it still, it still like applies the same today. But the levels, I guess, would be a little bit different. Yeah. Joyce coughing like Bill. <laughs> yeah, she takes on the coughs of the other characters. That's a good perk. I think that's a really interesting perk. It'd be a fun one to play around with. I think it's a good like kind of semi-deception perk. I, I I enjoy that idea a lot. Neat. Yep. Yeah, you, you just take... Bill. I mean, Bill sounds like he's injured even when he's just, like, running around. Ash does too. They're both very loud, even when they're just doing basic movement. <laughs> you don't quite understand what it does. Okay, so when you're within 10 meters of a survivor who's injured or coughing or sick or anything, you can take their noises um, and you can put them onto yourself but then it silences them. So it applies kind of like an iron will type effect onto them, and then you take their noises for a brief time. 
So it's meant as like a, a distraction tool for the killer to get them away from the injured survivor and onto you, basically. Hello, Anthony. Welcome in. Would be nice if we get the tank from Left 4 Dead 2. I honestly would love to see more Left 4 Dead um, DLC as well, to be honest with you. Um, if you're within 10 meters of them, it doesn't seem very useful, says Spooky. Maybe the, the range could be increased by a little bit, just so you could get a bit more distance away. Maybe like 20, 24, something like that. Because if the killer has line of sight, then obviously it's... um less useful at that point, right? But I really like the concept. Maybe a, a slight range increase could be useful though. Have you ever played Judgment? I have not played Judgment. What is that uh, game about, uh, Nova? A Warhammer DLC? I think uh, Pixelbush made a, a video on that. A potential and problems video on Warhammer. I, I know nothing about Warhammer, if I'm being honest. Um, but you can go check that video out if you want a um, kind of concept for that. I think he does kind of concept stuff in those videos, I'm pretty sure. Maybe it could work with the tag system. It gets you to play as a savior role for the team. Yeah, that's why I like it. I think it's a really interesting, like, it's like somewhat killer deception, but then it's also like um, altruism and stuff like that. I don't know. I, I think that's really cool. Um, moving on, next perk, Steadfast. Again, nice little images we have here, two of the perks. That was the first one. It's the uh, her hands holding a phone, which is like... Like, the whole of season one, she's just sitting there with the phone in her hands. <laughs> um, this one, she has an axe. Um, steadfast. If no one else can see the truth, you'll just have to do it yourself. When injured by any means, the killer's aura is revealed for five seconds. After being hooked, the killer receives the blindness status for 30 seconds. Okay, so that's, pr that's pretty, like, um, that's like a nice perk to have, I guess, right? I do like the application of blindness. I wish we had more perks, in fact, that applied um, status effects onto the killer. I think the only one we have at the moment is... Um... Oh, what's it called? Um... Uh, the the Hattie perk. The one that, that you, can, you can blind the killer with the flashlight and it applies the blindness effect to. But I really like the idea of that, of having, just in general too, of having more perks that apply status effects onto the killer. Because at the moment it's mostly killer onto survivor, it's rarely the other way around. Uh, Danger Squid, we are actually going to have, I do want to review um, a Resident Evil Chapter 3 here too. <laughs> I, I really want a Resident Evil Chapter 3 as well. I know that's a very unpopular opinion probably but i would love um a resident evil chapter three um yeah do we have hindered oh oh true we do with alan wake actually now we do don't we yeah residual manifest that's it yeah thank you uh hugh and uh holy there um and champion of light does apply hindered now that's very true it applies blindness and hindered Mango, I mean, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in, in fairness, yeah, uh, Cinnamon. We, we, not all status effects do work on killers. Like, applying Mangle to, onto the killer would, <laughs> would do very little. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh. Um. What's been your favorite DLC? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, my throat. I'm sorry. What's <laughs> What's been your favorite DLC so far, Azzy? Um, says the DBD person. <laughs> um, my favorite DLC. I don't know. Original DLC. Maybe Chains of Hate. I like Chains of Hate a lot. 
Um, I also like um, Curse Legacy too. In terms of licensed, it's probably one of the Resident Evil uh, ones, I would say. Oh, Chemical <coughs> Chemical Trap 2. I'm sorry, I'm coughing so much. Um, yeah. What's uh, everyone's favorite uh, chapters? Favorite original and favorite licensed. <coughs> you can answer that question while I get some water. <laughs> I need to get some water. Be back in a second. Favorite licensed chapters and favorite original chapters. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Got some water. <laughs> Feel a bit better now. Um, uh, hello, Cade. Um, let's see. Curse Legacy is all-time favorite. I do love Curse Legacy. Um, licensed is probably Saw. Um, Alien and All Kill. All Kill is very good too. The stream will be a VOD. Uh, yep, danger. <clears throat> the stream will be a VOD. <laughs> the Knight? I don't see many people saying the Knight chapter is their favourite. Um, so that's interesting. End Transmission and Resident Evil. A Lullaby for the Dark, says Neo. Descend Beyond and Halloween. Halloween's are like an all-time, all-time classic, isn't it? Ellen Ripley's favorite chapter is the Alien chapter. Wow, that's surprising. Who would have thought? <laughs> A Lullaby for the Dark, Darkness Among Us, and Ghostface. Roots of Dread. Roots of Dread is a great, um, like, return to horror chapter, isn't it? I think that's what I appreciate most about that chapter. I've never particularly liked um, the dredge as sort of... Um... Hey everyone. Oh! Uh, thank you, Shaden99, um, for becoming a member. Very kind, thank you. Um, I've never really liked... I like the dredge's visual design and sound design, but I've never really liked the power. I've always found the power to be such a... a strange combination of different things. Um, yeah. Um, so kind of a dumb question, but I want to cause as many jump scares as I can for Lights Out. But I'm really, truly terrible at the game. Any advice who to use? Well, Kyle, the best character to use for jump scares is absolutely Hag. <laughs> um, Hag is like a jump scare machine. On Lights Out, I, I imagine quite a few people will actually run hack. Her play, her play rates may genuinely go up because she'd be such a great pick for lights out. Um, and then other jump scares. I guess you can put on perks like overcharge, um, which uh, makes a difficult skill check appear on a generator when you kick it. Um, oppression too would be a good perk to run. Anything that like surprises people. Um, Hex uh, Huntress Lullaby, is that what it's called, that perk? Um, that's another good one. They have no sound when they... Uh... Oh wait, you can't run perks, can you, in this game mode? Never mind. Okay, well, killer-wise, I would say run Hag was the best pick. 
Yeah, no perks and lights out. <laughs> well, okay, my, my advice then would, would simply be to run hag, <laughs> basically. Yeah, no add-ons either in lights out. Trapper? I think all trap characters are going to be very good in lights out, yeah. Hag is so boring. Hag can be boring. Um, I tend to play her just now and then, and she's pretty fun. Like, I, I think if you were to main Hag, um, I don't know. Maining Hag isn't for me, at least. Yeah, no perks and lights out. No per It's no loadouts, I think. So no perks, no add-ons, no items. Um, it's just the characters, and you're in the darkness. And there's no terror radius. Um... What else isn't there? There's no terror radius, there's no... I think the red stain is still there. Stealth hillbilly. I mean, really, everyone has the potential to jump, sc uh, <clears throat> to jump scare and lights out, because uh, it, um, none of the killers are going to have a terror radius. Which I presume means, too, for, like, characters like... I guess Huntress would be the worst pick, because she has a lullaby. Other than that, I think everyone would be silent. Unless, like, Trickster keeps his lullaby, and Sadako keeps her lullaby. But I'm not too sure. Anyway, let's, we should get back to the, the concept. <laughs> um, okay, so the final perk here, for Joyce, this is a Joyce Byers concept. Um, is called Lights Up, and we have the image here as well. Very cool. You've learned to trust what the lights are telling you. Oh, this is when she's clutching the, the Christmas lights. That's like a, a big scene in Strange Things of uh, season one. Um, and how to use that to your advantage. After successfully blinding a killer, break into a sprint at 100% at 150% uh, at of your normal running movement speed for a maximum of three seconds. Um, causes the exhausted status for 40 seconds. Um, lights up cannot be used while exhausted. Whilst carrying a flashlight, it will silently blink in and out within 20 meters of a killer. This is only visible to you. Oh, that's a really cool additional effect there. So your flashlight gives you a, like a tiny warning when you're within 20 meters of a killer. It like, uh, it blinks to tell you a killer's there. I, I really like that effect. That's such a cool idea. That could be a perk, like, in itself, I think. Um, but yeah, very, very cool. Um, so this perk is an exhaustion perk. When you blind the killer, you run, you get a boost of speed, which is going to be very strong. Like, drop a pallet, the killer breaks a pallet, you blind them on the pallet, and you sprint off. That's going to be pretty strong, I would say. It's like a better smash hit or something, for example. Um, yeah, I... A good perk, but I do actually think balance because obviously, obviously you still need to get the blind off, things like that. Um, and then this additional effect of the the flashlight blinking when the killer's near is oh, I love that. That's such an awesome idea. <laughs> yeah, I really like that. And that um inc uh, that concludes the Joyce Byers um, concept, I think. Very, very cool. Um, this is a concept by Dweet. You can't see the name because Discord's cutting it off. Um, <laughs> but that was by Dweet, and it was also by um, Nico Silly Art 2. So it was made by them. They made lots of nice artwork for it too. Lots of cool perk images and stuff like that. Very, very cool. So yeah, what does everyone, what does everyone think about that one? I think they did a great job there. Lights up and Champion of Light would go crazy. That, that really would go crazy, wouldn't it? Nice perks. W concept. I think so too. Uh, you're back. Uh, we covered um, some original concepts like Survivors into Killers, Killers into Survivors um, by Hoffa. And then we're now doing a, jo a Joyce Byers concept too. Amazing, it's lit. I would main her. 
It's good for Joyce, yeah. W, yeah, it's a, <laughs> it is from Dweet, so, you know, maybe a leaked chapter, Ooh, potentially. Counted by Lightborn. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess so. I'd love this in the game. Looks pretty cool. Lightborn meta coming soon. <laughs> I mean, there's already potentially a Lightborn meta coming because of Alan Wake and his new perks. Although his his new perks really aren't, like, so bad, I think. Um, uh, to face as a killer. Uh, it's never too late, Chumbara, to submit a concept. Thank you, Dweet. Very cool. <laughs> Where can you contact Nico Silly Art? Um, I'm not sure. They might be on Twitter, potentially? Are you ever going to make another Hitman video? I have been... Interestingly, I have been playing Hitman recently. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I was trying out the uh, freelancer mode on Hitman 3, which is a lot of fun. So maybe... Um, and they did add um, a new map, um, Ambrose Island, or at least it's new for me, because I haven't played the game in a couple years. Uh, but yeah, maybe, potentially. Um, easy counter to Alan Wake's perks, wall. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> uh, you can do, Alan, yeah. Hitman chapter for DBD. Honestly, like, an Agent 47. Would he be a killer or a survivor? I guess he'd have to be a killer. He's, a, he's an assassin at the end of the day. Or he's a hitman. Are you going to make more lethal content? Probably not, just because... I don't know, I'm not really sure what else I'd do. Maybe like, I thought maybe you're doing like a scrap tier list. Maybe a moons tier list. Or something else like that. Something like that could be good. But then there's a lots, lots of other people out there who've done videos on those things and probably are a lot more knowledgeable about Lethal Company than I am, so. Yeah, Lightborn or Wool. How to counter Alan Wake's perks. <laughs> Let me see if I can find the, um, uh, uh Nico Silly art here. Um, just so I can show everyone. Um, because someone asked about that. So, I'm not, I'm not sure if they're on Twitter or X, if you want to call it that. Um... Let me just type in their name, Nico Silly Art. Oh, I think they are on Twitter. Um, give me a second. So that's them on Twitter. That's the tag too. It's just Nico Silly Art. So you can find them there. Oh. Yep, so that's them. This was one of the creators of the concept. Um, the other one was uh, Dweet, who you probably know. Most people probably know who Dweet is. <laughs> um, and then that's Dweet. Any creators you want to work with? I mean, hey, I'd be open to... <laughs> Working with uh, pretty much anyone. I have discussed a few things with uh, with people before, but we've just kind of never ended up like doing it because of like um, uh, various things. But yeah, I, I would I would be up for doing it. Maybe getting someone on stream one day would be nice. So yeah, they were the two creators of this uh, this Joyce Byers chapter or paragraph, whatever you want to call it. John Wick is a killer. <laughs> Which lethal monster would fit best into DBD? Maybe the Bracken? As kind of like a stalking character, maybe? 
I'm not really sure what other characters would even... Like, the thumpers don't really work. They're not really, like... They'd be too, like, low to the ground, I think. The coil heads could be interesting, but... Again, not too sure how that'd work. Like, if you were looking at the killer, they can't move. Like, that kind of sucks. But maybe a bracken. A bracken could, a bracken could uh, maybe work. A collab with Jurassic Park. I would like that, to be honest. <laughs> I'd be down for that. Okay, this next one I wanted to look at. I I, I wanted to look at because I just thought it, it was um, it was kind of funny. <laughs> I thought we could interlude some of these more serious ones with some funny ones. So um, yeah, I'll put that up for a second and I'll pull up the um the next concept. You you probably saw it in the thumbnail. <laughs> Um, where is the concept? Um, okay, here it is. Here we go. The Saul Goodman <laughs> concept. <laughs> New survivor, Saul Goodman. Let me pull up a, a, an image real quick. Saul Goodman. <laughs> now I'm partly just including this one because I really like Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of a silly one, admittedly. Um, but I, I, I do think it'd be cool. So there we go. There's a picture of Saul there for a little reference. <laughs> So uh, here we go, Saul Goodman from Batical Saul, and this one's by uh, Hoff. Or oh, Hey Every Pony, um, they go by two. Um, so, <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all good, man. You see your concept in there? Oh yeah, that I was gonna review your your uh, scarecrow one as well. We will get around to that. <laughs> um, it's all good, man. Description: a lawyer. Wow, a lawyer you can trust. I should really say. Um, perks: Saul Goodman. <laughs> when standing still for five, four, three seconds, the camera zooms into your face, and the better call Saul theme song plays. <laughs> Um, during this time you have permanent iframes until you either move or get idle crows upon which the perk deactivates. <laughs> oh, so, busted perks, but then again it's Saul Goodman, so, you know, of course he does. Nacho skin. Yeah, he can have a Nacho skin, he can have a Chuck skin. Chuck would be, uh, terrible against the Doctor. Um, is this a, is this one the name of the perks? Saul Saul Goodman Goodman? Okay. You can Saul Goodman all over the killer, upon which the killer will say, Ouch, I've been Saul Goodman. Saul, Good, Saul Saul Goodman Goodman causes the exhaustion status for 60, 50, 40 seconds. He has the protection of the law on his side. OP perk. <laughs> Slippin' Jimmy. Yeah, he needs like a Slippin' Jimmy perk. Like, he can fake tripping over. A bit like Plot Twist. There should be something like that. Like, he can fake slipping over and injuring himself for the killer. <laughs> it's me. I'm the Saul Goodman. Not sure if he ever says that one. <laughs> the best lawyer. When the killer hooks the same person three times in a row without hooking anyone else. Okay, so tunneling. You can press the active ability button with uh, within 8, 10, 12 meters of the killer to sue the killer for tunneling. <laughs> a court case will then commence. In trial, an in trial court case will commence. So this is going to be quite a, a technical feat for um, behavior, I think, introducing Saul Goodman. They're going to have to implement some kind of courtroom and trial process. 
So that's going to be interesting. <laughs> um, if the killer is found guilty, the dead survivor respawns with no hook stages, and the entity's trial continues. Very interesting. What a good way to counter tunneling too. They just get all their their hook stages completely reset if they're found guilty of tunneling. <laughs> It would also encourage people not to to just uh, take chances on Hook too. I just talked you down from a death sentence to six months probation. I'm the best lawyer ever, Saul Goodman. You know, and I see I've watched so much Better Call Saul that I know the exact moment that's referencing, which is um, well actually I guess it's not that like d deep as it? it's it's fairly early into the series um when he saves two skaters from getting killed by uh, Tuco Salamanca. And the new, map, the new map is a Cinnabon in Omaha. Very nice. Um, it takes place in uh, at a Cinnabon in a mall in Omaha. Now, I'm not sure if they're saying that map is going to be just inside the Cinnabon, because that's going to be tiny, <laughs> if so, or if they mean the entire mall. Um, you don't know anything about the series. This must be very confusing for you, then. <laughs> the survivor we don't need or want. <laughs> w concept. Yeah, because they call uh, Tuka's uh, Abuelita, which I think is auntie, isn't it? I think so. Um, a biznatch. A mall map. A mall map is a great concept, but I think it was if it was just inside the Cinnabon, it would be a little bit too small. <laughs> because the Cinnabon is not very big. Let me get a picture of it. If I get a little a picture up of the Um Oh wait, I think it's this one. Yeah. Like it's not big. You see, it's like it's like this tiny, there's like a little area to buy this. So, uh, from the sounds of it, it's just inside here, the entire map. <laughs> yeah, that'd be interesting. But if it was the whole mall, I would agree that'd be such a cool idea, to be honest with you. Never bothered watching. I would highly recommend watching Batical Soul. It's my, um, it's my personal favourite series. Um, and a series I've made a few videos on, if you didn't know about that. I'm sure some of you know about my second channel. Um, but I do have a second channel. Um, where I've posted a few Better Cool Saw videos. Here's my second channel. Would you look at that? Wow. Over Breaking Bad, I would, I, I do think it's better than Baking, uh, Breaking Bad, but Outlander, <laughs> Outland, <coughs> Outlander is enjoyable, but you know, <laughs> um, it do doesn't quite compare. <laughs> you recognize the voice instantly. Half of the comments on that channel are just, "Is this the DBD guy?" And then the other half. Uh, like discussing the video <laughs> yeah no I, I do think a mall map is a very good idea obviously this concept as a whole is a bit of a meme though it's, it's not meant to be too serious um okay so next concept we will go on to um cinnamon's concept now of the um the scarecrow this is another original concept um and yeah i did click on it i haven't read it though admittedly um, I wanted to save that for the for when we talked about it now, so. Asimov's Deep Law. <laughs> William Afton. I think there are a few Springtrap um, uh, concepts we could maybe check out. Being accused of tunneling? Better call Saul. <laughs> they add the fly from Breaking Bad. Would the fly be a killer or a survivor, though? I guess a survivor. The, the fly survives a lot. 
inside of a Breaking Bad. Let me just get this a little bit more centered so you can all see it a bit better. Um, I can put the chat back on now too. I just whack it over here. As he law, one day he woke up and made content. Did you post just the add-ons? No, there's the... I, I didn't uh, scroll up, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, this, this is an original character, I believe, called the Scarecrow. I think it's an original character. The only other Scarecrow I can think of is from... Um, the is from like the Batman films, <laughs> but I don't think it's from that. I'm pretty sure it's original. Um, so yeah, the Scarecrow. Difficult. They've added a difficulty too. That's nice. Intermediate. Um, terror radius forty meters. Okay, so this would be the second um, killer with a forty meter terror radius aside uh, Wesker too. Um, movement speed four point six. Power, King of Fear. This is nice, a nice short power. It's not like, you know, singularity, like when you use quantum entanglement when, uh, against a survivor, they become overdrive for three seconds and uh, hindered for two, stuff like that, you know? Um, the Scarecrow uses his special fear toxin to distort the senses of survivors and cause immense fear. Survivors in the Scarecrow's terror radius gain fear over time. When a survivor becomes fully afraid, they scream and reveal their location. Okay, so it's like an AoE ongoing effect, which I assume is why the terror radius is so big too. It sounds a bit like Old Doctor almost, but just with like a much larger um, radius, because Old Doctor used to have like an AoE shock effect around him, but it was like very small. I think it was like eight meters or something. It wasn't very large. So this seems like it would act almost like the same, but like 40 meters instead. I think that's quite interesting. Oh, this is Scarecrow from DC. Okay, so this is a, a concept focusing on uh, DC Scarecrow. Let me pull up, pull up an uh, image then in that case. Um... Scarecrow from DC. Uh, I might have to move the screen over a bit now. Um, so yeah, they look some a bit like that. <laughs> oh, got rid of that one sec. Um. So yeah, I, I think that's a cool sounding ability though. Ultimate, ultimate weapon stocks rising. <laughs> Carnage in DBD, that's another cool one. I do think like out of the DC villains, Scarecrow is definitely one of the more fitting ones I would say for like a game like Dead by Daylight due to the, the fact that he has, he does uh, rely on fear and stuff, which is very, kind of tied to the entity. Um, yeah. Oh, and they have a number of special abilities too. So, special ability, Fear Toxin Canister. The Scarecrow can place a canister of Fear Toxin to release a gas that spreads out in a 16 meter radius over 4 seconds. Okay, so they can ramp, ramp up more Fear levels by uh, dropping toxins. I assume that's a bit like a uh, Clown, except... Um, they're placeable in certain areas. Survivors in this gas gain fear over time and have their vision distorted. If they are also in the Scarecrow's terror radius or lullaby, fear is gained at three times the normal speed. The gas dissipates after 45 seconds um, and the canister must be picked up and refilled for further use. Okay, so it's a one-time use thing. That, make, that makes more sense. So you can't just like spam them everywhere. <laughs> Oh, true, Joker. Joker could work as well. Yeah, yeah. That is true. Joker could work as well. Uh, 
Um, special effect afraid. Fully afraid survivors hear the scarecrow's terror radius at a decreased distance of 24 meters, but they hear a lullaby while within a 40 meter range. After um, after being out of the scarecrow's terror radius for 10 seconds, fear starts decreasing. Afraid only ends when the fear fully decreases. I do like that. That's good to how it will slowly regress. It means you have to continue putting up pressure and things like that. Um, yeah. Joker skin for clown could work. Um, then the final special attack, Hooked Chain. The Scarecrow wields a hooked chain. Oh, that's cool. Um, that he can throw at enemies to grapple them. Oh, that's very cool. So a killer that can grapple survivors. <laughs> I really like that, actually. Hold the ability button to charge a hook attack. The longer it is charged, the farther it travels. Survivors who are hit by the hook are quickly pulled a short distance toward the Scarecrow and lose a health state. Afraid survivors suffer from deep wound and are pulled a longer distance on hit. Okay, so that's a very good, um, sort of, uh, what do you call it? It's a good motivation to stay out of fear, because it means if you get grabbed, you get pulled uh, a shorter distance toward him. I think that's very cool. I think those effects work pretty well together as well. Um, and again, I, I do like the ramping up AoE effect. Um, again, sort of like how Old Doctor worked, but just kind of on a, a much larger scale. Um, okay, so perks. Moving on to the perks. Joker as a trickster cosmetic. I think he was partially based on one of the the jokers uh trickster okay so hex always like to see a hex hex face your fears um the only way to survive is to stand up and face your fears gain a token the first time you hook each survivor up to a maximum of four tokens one token oh i like I, I love all hex perks or just perks in general that have like a ramping effect to be honest with you like uh, Pentimento and Devour Hope. Really like all those perks like that. Um, gain a token Gain a token the first time you hook each survivor up to, I read that. Um, one token. Suffer, uh, survivors are afflicted with Oblivious. Two. Survivors are afflicted with Blindness. Three. Survivors are afflicted with Exhaustion. Uh, four. Survivors are afflicted with a 5% hindered effect. So that's going to be a very high priority totem to get rid of. Um, much like totems like Devour and Pentimento, you want to get rid of them as soon as possible. I'm not sure if that would be too powerful. I think it wouldn't be purely for the fact that it's each time an, a different survivor is hooked. Um, yeah. That's an add-on? Which one's an add-on? I like the, the sound of that perk though. It sounds very cool. What does everyone think of uh, Hex Face Your Fears? Again, I really like perks that ramp up in that way and have the like the staggered rewards for the better you're doing. It's a bit of a combination of something like Grim Embrace um, and then something like Devour or Pentimento. You don't think Oblivious should be the first? Maybe it should go Blindness first, yeah, instead of Oblivious. Oh, you're applying so okay. <laughs> I, I think I agree with that. Um kill kill -oo? kill -oo kill. Um I, I think it should go blindness, then oblivious, then exhausted. Just because blindness is definitely the weakest of those effects, I think immediately making everyone oblivious is maybe a little bit too strong. But I think blindness is is perfectly fair. <laughs> Face your fears. Same opinion, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it would work very well. I just think switching the, the two effects there would be like my, my only um, difference I'd make. 
Um, okay, Servants of the Fog. <gasps> is this a crow perk? Oh, I want more crow perks so badly in the game. <laughs> um, omens of death and servants to the entity, yet they bend. This actually makes sense for the, the scarecrow as well. I, I don't know why that didn't clock with me, but that makes a lot of sense. Um, yet they bend to the will of a scarecrow. Survivors in your terror radius who startle crows hear fake chase music for seven seconds. You can no longer startle crows. That I think that's such a cool perk idea. Like that's such a that's such a great way to introduce new um, crow perk effects, um, uh, with them also doing something a bit more unique. You know, I really like that. So survivors in your terror radius who startle a crow are gonna hear fake chase music as if they're being chased for seven seconds, even if you aren't actually chasing them. I really like that. I think that's very cool. What, what's everyone's thoughts on that one? Yeah, more crow perks. Crow perks, let's go. <laughs> Great idea. Good afternoon, Afterlight. Crow sweep. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I think that would work very well. That's a that's a pretty fair effect as well, you know. Um, do you think crows should be reworked or more perks should be introduced? I think they should just introduce a few more crow perks. I'm still like slightly baffled they never gave artists crow perks. Such a cool idea. I I agree, Ethan. You would run that, yeah. <laughs> I I would run that a bunch too. It'd be a, it'd be a great um, deception build perk, wouldn't it? Uh, with the icon on the left show if you were in a chase, maybe that would be a way to kind of like discern if it was a real chase or not. I'm not sure. Kind of niche, but that perk would be good. Catch people by surprise. Crows, yeah, exactly. It being a crow perk is a good start. <laughs> I, I like that perk a lot. Um, killers shouldn't disturb, disturb crows anyway. I mean, I, I, I sort of think maybe stealth killers shouldn't. But I, I think all the other killers should, because it's a good way for survivors to keep track of areas too. It's, it's, I think the crows are meant to be uh, tools for both sides. At least that, that's the way I've always sort of seen them. Okay, then the final perk is called Paranoia. Um, I've seen crows portraying the location of undetectable killers very frequently, so it's a nice, a nice additional effect. I agree. It would pair well. Um, okay, Paranoia. Your deep knowledge of fear lets you implant a doubt into your victims that grows. When an injured survivor reunites with another survivor, they both suffer the oblivious effect until they are either both healed or outside of 60 meters of each other. Um, Any time a survivor is affected by the oblivious effect, they cannot read your aura if they cannot read your aura if you are beyond 60 meters of them. Um, okay, so when an injured survivor reunites with another, okay, so when an injured survivor finds someone. Um, they both become oblivious until they're with until they leave 60 meters from each other. Um, that's a little similar to what is that perk? Deathbound. It's like a reverse deathbound. Probably a more useful deathbound, I would say too. <laughs> um, and that's good too because it means when people go for heals, they're going to become oblivious. So that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, and when they're affected by this, um, they also can't read your aura, which is pretty nice. But only beyond a certain range. I think this the range is meant to be so you can get into their terror radius, I think. What does everyone think of that? I think that's a, that's a cool idea. More consistent deathbound, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it, it pretty much is. It could even work, honestly, as a deathbound rework. Deathbound has won you hit and run games. See, the thing I don't like about Deathbound is it, it, it it's often hard to know when it's working. It doesn't have much like um much of a visual response, I guess you'd say. Which is I think why I, I personally struggle with the perk. 
I do like the puck though. I, I think this would genuinely be a, a pretty decent rework to it. Yeah, a, a more consistent, um, more consistent deathbound. Yeah. Paranoia and plaything. That's true. That would be very strong. <laughs> After late. Deathbound is meta, says Moyai, <laughs> and nothing is more consistent than it. Interesting. <laughs> okay, then finally here we have a bunch of add-ons. Um, iridescent fear toxin canister. Um, a canister filled with a mixture of the fog and fear toxin that uh, distorts perception to a higher degree. Afraid survivors hear a fake 16 meter lullaby that originates from the location of other survivors. Oh, I really like that one. That one could always be like a deception power in itself. So this this effect makes it so survivors have a, a fake terror radius. Oh, I, I would really like that to be honest. I think that's very cool. It'd also be very confusing if everyone had that. Um, yeah. Where do I get my music? Uh, Grom, my music is just from YouTube Audio Library. You can get it for free. Um, yeah, on on the. Are oh, you looking back at it, KMD? <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, you did a you did a really great job, KMD. You should be uh should be very proud. It's a very cool chapter. A uh, very cool concept. Okay, uh, toxin glove, another ultra rare. Have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons? Um, describe which D&D class of each kill. I haven't played Dungeons and Dragons. It is something I want to get into, but like, I don't know. I don't really have like a, a gr I need to find like a group of people, right? <laughs> um, yeah. The concept is cool. But I would like to get into Dungeons and Dragons, but um, yeah, I kind of need to find a group of people to do it with. Um, free up some time to be able to do it as well. But it does interest me. Um, anyway, Toxin Glove. A glove with vials of fear toxin, meant for close range injection. Injuring a survivor instantly makes them afraid. Survivors no longer gain fear from being in your terror radius. Okay, so that like ramps it up instantly. It's kind of like applying the dream world with Freddy almost. Um, and survivors don't gain fear from being in your terror radius. Okay, so now, okay, so basically this just shifts the power into being um, more of like an M1 applicable thing. I, th I think that's a that's a pretty decent trade-off. I would actually say it's weaker though. I don't know. I, I would think it's slightly weaker. I guess it'd be preference. Okay, um, and then these are the other um, add-ons too. We're not going to read through all of them. Um, I think for the add-ons on some of the um, concepts, I'm just going to touch on the iridescence like I did with the previous ones too. Um, just so we can cover a bit more ground on uh, more concepts. But yeah, that was a, a Scarecrow concept by um, Cinnamon. And yeah, I think really great overall. I, I especially like the perks. I think the perks are very good. Um, and a cool AoE type power. Sounds very interesting. Hello, Tom. Um. Ah, okay, KMD. Okay, so moving on, we'll, we'll do the next concept I had lined up, um, which was... Oh yeah, I wanted to look at, um, I think it was an original one. One second. <clears throat> we'll stick that up for a second while I pull it up. Shouldn't be too long. Um, so this was another original, um, concept. Um, let me see where it was. They like put a lot of work into it. It looks very impressive. Um, OK, 
Okay, so... Dun, dun, dun. Nearly there. Okay, so... This concept is called the superhero. I think it's origin an original concept, I believe. Um, and yeah, so this is the next one we're going to be looking at. Dwight Jumpscare? What? <laughs> oh, Dwight, <laughs> Dwight from the B-Ray back screen, right? Oh, I was confused what you meant then for a second. Um, yeah, okay. So, new killer, the superhero. I took a brief look over this one, but I didn't. I didn't read it in detail, so we'll sort of just um, uh, see what it's about. But they, they again, they put a lot of effort into this. It's like a whole document on it. It's really cool. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's an actual superhero with superpowers or not, but we'll see, I guess. Um, Stu Sweeney, I assume that's their actual name, is a visitor of the dark arts, hiding it under the shroud of his egotistical persona. Able to swerve around the map with the entity's support, he can strike survivors with great force mid-flight. Okay, so this would be a flying killer, which is quite, uh, that, that's, I mean, that's gonna be, I'm not sure if that would work in DBD, um, but it's definitely something interesting to consider. Um, yeah, um, We'll see how they introduce the power, um, but yeah. So a flying killer, very interesting. His personal perks, Kapow, Superior Senses, and Punchline allow him to strike where it hurts, show his bond with the entity, and infer a deeper intent with things that don't go his way. Um, Okay, that's just the same thing I just read, but just in the, the stylized DBD version. Name, Stewie, Stu Sweeney, uh, male, from Wales, Realm, Narvery City. Is that a real place? I'm not too sure. Um, power, the Looming Axe. Ooh. Power, power attack type, special attack, weapon, trademark gloves. There are 4.6 and they have a 32 meter terror radius. Average height, too. And they can fly. Look at this, too. They've done a whole, like, comic book with the character on. I think that's so cool. Um, depicting the real events from June 7th. Stu Sweeney, issue number one, maybe? It looks very, very cool. Um... Okay, now here's their backstory. They do say this is um, down here. They do say it's a work in progress. I did read through it once already um, before the stream, and I think it's like they haven't quite reached the point of them getting to the realm, but I can still do the kind of introductory part of it. Um, did I actually say who this was by? This is by someone called um, Ellis Buster, it says here. What does it say on Discord? Um, what was their Discord name? Buster P on Discord too. So that's who this concept is by. I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce it. Um, yeah, okay, so, backstory. Stu Sweeney was a man of tunnel vision. His early childhood was met with a monochrome grey and the smell of opium. Um, the astigmatism of the light seen in the foggy city, um, only but vivid. The city wailed, Wait, uh, ranging from shouts across the street to riots booming from the main square miles away. His recollections of school were the dingy bulbs and the heavy school bag stitched together. His kicks and screams and protests for toys and bruises from fights. A black hood that covered his head, a damp oak branch he once slept on. The clearest parts he could recall were the fantasies that were in his head, made from the stories that his dad told him. Stories of serpents and tanks and goats, misfits who find a tower. The one that engaged Stu the most was the story of a superhero who would swoop around all day and help solve problems that occurred in the town he resided in. Stu enjoyed having a role model to look up to, especially one to turn 
to turn to whilst his um, dad was absent at work. Um, it would distract him from the outside city filled with uncertainty. Father always wanted to emphasize the explorative attitude from Stu that he himself was never able to explore. Every night after the stories were told, Stu would sit in bed. He pondered. The transition between his creativity and his dreams would become seamless sometimes, but it was all so vivid. Megamind? <laughs> Why is his teeth so realistic? These ones... They do, don't they, actually? That's very true. Um, vivid, sure, but the towering building blocks... Uh, uh, towering buildings blocking the sky cause him to wander. Throughout the blend of reality and fiction, Stu never grasped the, com grasped the complexity of humans compared to animals. Hierarchies, rules, laws... A mild mouse followed its instincts. Wolves hunted in packs but didn't follow concepts. Ants and bees were ones of unification, but their incentive was survival. Humans yearned for currency, currency and dominion, power. Humans were very unique in that case. Um, even growing up, stories turned into lessons and attempts to reinforce a level of caution and independence growing up. Stu interpreted, interpreted them differently. He sought them as challenges. This was a really cool concept. Yeah, it, it looks very cool as well. Uh, I think so too, Moon. Um, his dad stopped telling him stories early on in his teenage years due to occupation, leaving Stu to think to himself more. Especially after the unorthodox sessions of academy and counselling, unchaperoned he sparked debates with relatives um, and challenged teachers. He contorted his dialogue in a way to make his upcoming punishments prove his point in a way that startled even the most agreeable. It distracted him from work, his grades unremarkable. He drew his focus toward the research of law, business, and psychology, being things outside of his actual curriculum, to overpower one must understand. Many attempted to avoid his conversations, and his I ideologies brewed up, his fixations reason being hard to convey in words. In his spare time, he'd go onto the college computers after hours, checking out newly formed web pages to discuss the concepts of human versus naturality. Hours worth of gloating and freedom behind an unknown alias. Um, what such bliss to have. He spent far too much time away from home. His room stockpiled with awaiting mails and overdue essays, incomplete sheets and, tra and trash scrunches of paper. He never saw his dad enough to know his opinion on the matter, but Stu knew his goals were the priority. Classmates saw him as an outcast, and any attempt to communicate with him would be a death sentence for that individual's time. Joining groups seemed beneficial from unaware, individual, um, from unaware individuals for 10 minutes. Discussions on the state of city crime eventually led to a discourse between him and destitute brothers Cameron and Doug Haley. They obviously didn't put the work in like he had to go far. Why should he show sympathy? They were obviously in the wrong. Stu only used the, colli uh, the college as an outlet to apply the skills he learned himself, yet felt incomplete. Incomplete job letters, poor work, and unaccepted university applications were the last straw, eventually having him kicked out of college. He stumbled out with a light rucksack hung from one shoulder and a fistful of knowledge. Alas, nobody understood him, those inferior peasants. Eventually, he was later forced out the apartment he resided in. What the bleep <laughs> was money for anyway? It was a matter of a few hours for Stu to be out in the cold streets. He didn't know whether the dampness of his shirt was the rain or just grease. The library computer was slow, so Stu spent the time highlighting books and reading comics. The time he was online abled him to, abled him to both. Okay, so that's where it leaves off for now. So there's there's more lore to be added still, but that's like the... I, I think probably like nearing the time he reaches the realm. Um, so yeah, quite a depressing story, seemingly. Um, with like a, a character who's kind of become... Um, disillusioned, I suppose you could say. From their like upbringing and surroundings and stuff. So yeah, um, and again, this is a superhero character concept. Um, Buster P or Alice Buster have done has done a bunch of um, really cool things with this. 
chapped concept. Emotionally unstable. <laughs> um, so the power is called the Looming Axe. Contacting the entity has forced you a lifelong commitment. The superhero is a, ve <clears throat> is a vessel for greater power. The superhero starts with five flight tokens. I'm interested to see how they introduce flying. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Hold the power button to channel a heroic perception and release the button to initiate your flight. Whilst in a flight, you enter a radial path around the perception at high speeds. You can move left or right to adjust your position around the perception. Hold the, the power button to channel chain another perception whilst in flight. Okay, so I think you can... It's almost like blinking, I think. Um, where you, like, mark a point and then you can kind of fly to it. Um, tap the power button to swap your direction um, or the flight path you're already in. Both actions use one flight token. The flight ends if you come into contact with a solid environment for a couple of seconds or the window runs out. Um, placing the perception on an elevated area... <clears throat> Above or below you will cause you to punch your way through the environment into the clearest area to initiate the flight. Okay. Hitting a survivor in flight will put them into the dying state. Okay, so when you're flying, if you attack, you insta-down survivors. That does sound very powerful. An insta-down ability where you can also fly. Um, but it does also sound kind of tough to control. Um, so yeah. Once the flight ends, you are put into a fatigue and your tokens will replenish over time. Oh look, they've even done a little animation here. Um, of the, the, the superhero's hand there. Um, casting out the perception to mark the flight path. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It's even done in like a comic style. That's really cool. Air Wesker. It does, it does sound very powerful, I will say that much. I mean, being able to fly at all. It kind of depends on the speed, I think. Like, if it's very fast and hard to control, it could make it a bit tricky. But, um, I, I don't know, it, it seems, um, it seems very good. Although it does, it does seem powerful again. <laughs> That's cool, not gonna lie. I think so too. Again, really cool they've they've done the animations for it too. So you cast it a bit like you do with Nurse or um, with uh, Pinhead's Chains, I think, to kind of mark out your flight path or where you want to begin your flight. You get some five tokens. No, they, they replenish when the flight ends, I think it said. Is that what it, what it said? Um... Once the flight ends, you are put into a fatigue and your your tokens replenish over time. Yeah, so it's not like five per match. It's like you can fly up with one token, then you can chain together, I think, four more um, movements, and then you go down to the ground again and it um, regenerates. I imagine a bit like a Nurse Blink or a Blight's Rushes, a bit like that. It's, it does sound very OP. I do agree with that, but it um, is a very cool idea. Um, maybe instead of insta-downing them, it could put them into, like, deep wound or something, you know? Just to give them a bit of an extra chance. Yeah, W for the animations. Very cool they did animations. I think that's so cool. Okay, so power trivia. Um... Okay, so place distance. Okay, this is going over the different... In flight. Is that what that means? You move 45 meters per second in flight. Okay, so it sounds like... I oh know, flight speed 14. Okay. Still a very fast flight speed, it seems like. Yeah, it does sound very fast. But then again, it's flying, so it makes sense for it to be fast. <laughs> um, eight second wind duration when flying. Oh wow, there's a lot of details here. You can only look a certain degree to your left or right, I think. Oh no, flight movement speed 10 meters per second. 
that's not too bad. I think that's actually a, a pretty fair um, amount of movement speed there. And then when you channel, it slows down a little bit. Yeah. They have really put a lot of thought into this though. Yeah, 10 meters per second. Yeah, that does make more, sec uh, more sense. I think it was 45. I just think it'd be too hard to control. <laughs> Yeah, no, 10, 10 meters per second. Yeah, yeah. I, I misread it. Okay, so creator's notes. Um, I always wanted to make a subverted uh, superhero genre. The character only cares about himself. Quite a, gen a generic trait that turns quite hyperbolic in his lore. He was given power and wanted to shape a godlike image of himself as a result. Um, the superhero's power is similar to any dash killer. Okay, so lots of people are saying like a bit like Wesker. I, I think um, that's also what they were going for with that then. Um, whilst there are some similarities to uh, Blight or Blight, um, the superhero takes on a more complex but diverse moveset, able to reach elevated parts of the map and able to mind game to and from different points in a loop. Um, the superhero requires the player to be mindful of how they spend their tokens, needing to chain your perceptions around loops to find the most optimal path. I think a great thing about this power idea is the fact that there could be um, optimal perception placements, requiring good map and tile knowledge to clear loops, and by means, um, um, and by means chases quickly. The path he takes is radial, however I feel like he can go around the perception so widely and can choose how wide he can go. Um, so that isn't a major issue. I'm still skeptical on whether his power should immediately down survivors instead of dealing a health state, so I'm all for feedback. That would be my my one, my main feedback, I think. Um, when they're in the flight mode, I think either a deep wound or just an injure. I think insta-downing? A flying killer who can insta-down you, I do think is a, a little too strong, I would say. Even though it does sound a bit tough to actually maneuver with the, the flight and everything, I, I do think an insta-down might be a little bit too strong. But I, I do think like deep wound would probably work quite well as a, a compromise. On the topic of add-ons, I wanted to make ones that allowed many playstyles. Some people may want to go... Uh, wide with shots, some people may want niche quality of life add-ons that just enhance the base kit, some people may just want to go fast. These, ad these add-ons can be combined to make weirder playstyles. Um, um, such as the volume 1 and the story notes allow you to slingshot yourself whilst replacing the volume 1 with the Reese's watch, allows you to have a center spot for your fly towards whilst chasing allowing for an entirely different playstyle with unique counterplay for each. Okay, so that's good. They seem to have put, put a lot of thought into how the um, um, add-ons work. What concept is this? This is um, a, a superhero concept made by Buster P or Ellis Buster. Um, and th these are all the add-ons. Again, I'll like I'll scroll through them. We'll just read the iridescence. Um, just because I'm being conscious of time. Um, but they put a lot of work into these, clearly. Um, and they've done a whole list of the different add-ons here. Um, yeah, very cool. What's everyone thinking of it so far? I do like it a lot. And, and if they could ever introduce a flying character, that would be so awesome, I think. Um, and I do like the idea of having a superhero. But having sort of a, a DBD twist on it, you know? Hello, um, NX, I guess I'd say. NXOXOX. But yeah, I like it a lot. And again, they've detailed a bunch of add ons here. Really creative, yep, yeah, I agree. And then the res. good but needs some tweaks. The only thing I would tweak, to be honest, is the the insta down and flight. And even, I think even the creators realize, like, maybe that's a little too strong as well, so. You like it lore-wise, but you're not sure with the power. Flight is definitely something you need to be careful with, isn't it? So. Um, but I think the way they've described it is, is quite fair. Okay, then we'll read the iridescence out. 
Um, okay. Black Hood, a remnant of Stu's past, he remembered the times um, of him and his peers wearing dark hoods. Some said it was to protect from being spotted amidst the city's chaos, some thought otherwise. Stu lost, thought, lost enough friends to not know the truth. Placing a perception 16 meters near pallets and vault locations calls upon the entity to block them for 20 seconds. Can only be affected by one perception at a time. Okay, so the perception is when you begin the flight. It's like where you place your flight down and begin it. So that would mean you block pallets when... That's a very iridescent add-on, I do have to say. <laughs> but that would be very strong. Um, but I think it's okay, because it is an iridescent add-on. So... When you begin your flight, it would also block pallets in the area. Um, yeah, that's pretty strong. Um, the, devs, the devs had a flying killer concept before DBD was released, but even um, they thought that it would be too powerful. <laughs> Says uh, Afterlight. Um, but then they introduced Nurse. Yeah, very true. <laughs> is, this, is this really too different from Nurse? I, I don't really think so. If anything, I, I'd say this would be a bit weaker than Nurse. Nurse is just like so so busted. <laughs> um, father's story notes. Crumple but um, preserved pieces of literature made by Stu's father. Carrying them around brought back memories of a fantasy that didn't blow out of control. Maybe the Instadown could be part of an eerie add-on. That could work perfect, yeah. Maybe, maybe adding the Instadown uh, to the to an add-on. Yeah. Um, you no longer fly around the perception, but fly towards it. Increases the length of the perception's channeling distance by 8 meters. Hitting a survivor only deals 1 health state in your flight. Reduces the number of flight tokens by 2. Increases fatigue duration by 1.5. When, contact when contacting with a wall, you will bump and immediately enter a fatigue. Okay, so this is more of like an, I think, a more direct flight rather than flying around. It's more of a, a straight flight, I think, um, at the cost of a shorter flight and um, um, the lack of an insta down. So yeah, very, very powerful though. Okay, so um, now we have the perks. Perk one, Kapow. I like that name. It's a bit like a Skull Merchant's Thwack perk. <laughs> but Kapow is a, I don't know, I think that's a better name than Thwack, not gonna lie. Um, hitting a survivor with your basic attack reduces their movement speed bonus by 0.75 seconds. This perk deactivates after a survivor is killed or sacrificed by any means. That's pretty strong. So what they're referring to here is when you damage a survivor, they get a speed boost. Um, this perk would reduce the amount of speed boost they get, which I do think is very, very strong, actually. Even if it's just by 0.75 seconds. Um, yeah, that sounds very strong. I would maybe drop it down to 0.25 as, like, the base? I don't know. Very cool idea, but I do think it would be very strong. Maybe it could be a, a Hex? Hex Kapow? Or something? Just so, I don't know, because it does it does seem quite strong, I think. I think you you currently get, like, I think it's only it's only just over a second you get of uh, speed boost when injured. So that would reduce it by quite a substantial amount. Um, I do like the perk idea, but I think that's a, a little too strong at the moment. This would bring an Overcome meta, yeah, it definitely would. Overcome would be the, the direct counter for it, I suppose. Um, perk 2, Superior Senses. Whenever you hook a survivor, gain a token up to a maximum of 5 tokens. Each token extends the duration a survivor's aura is revealed by 1 second. Whenever a survivor unhooks somebody, the rescuer's aura is revealed to you for 20 seconds after 5 seconds. You don't gain tokens from hooking the same survivor in a row. Okay, so this works a bit like, um, is it Lethal Pursuer? That extends the uh, aura reveal duration. Um, it seems a little bit like that. Um, kind of. Um, but that does sound good. I, I think that, that probably works well. You get 1.8 at base. Okay, so so Kapow would reduce the, the, the boost to 1.05. I still think that's like way too powerful. That's like nearly halving it. Um, 
but I do think it's cool still. Um, yeah, I, I, I like this part too. I like the idea of extending auras. I think that's a really nice effect. Um, <clears throat> make it a bit more... If you paired it up with lethal as well, it would be it'd be very, very good. Okay, part three, punchline. Um, once the people know who they're up against, they will process a feeling unlike no other. When entering a chase with a survivor, the perk activates. Three seconds after entering the chase, they will scream and reveal their aura for three seconds. Whenever a survivor drops a pallet, um, they will also reveal their aura for an additional three seconds. Um, there is a random chance they will scream a second time in which their aura will be, re will be, will be revealed two seconds longer. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So it, just, it makes them scream a lot in chase. They start a chase, um, three seconds in, scream aura. Um, if they drop a pallet, um, scream aura as well. I mean, that's good. That's like consistent information throughout the chase. That's like a, a solid chase perk, I would say. Um, you can send concepts into the Discord sunlight. Um, and there's a DBD ideas channel where you can make like little kind of blog post things um, that people can comment on and stuff like that. It's a bit like scene partner for killer, yeah, perfect. Um, but it would be, it, I think it'd actually be a very, a very good tracking perk, um, without being too powerful as well, which is good. You know, it's been, it's been kept in check. <laughs> um, okay, the Mori. I seem to remember they made a Mori um for this one. Yeah, I think they did. Um. Let me bring up Discord. I think they actually they made like an animation of it. Oh look, they they visualized how the the flight works as well. So when you're flying, it's in these kind of like rings. Um. Yeah, this was the Mori, I think. Oh, a little bit loud. Let me just turn it down. Um. So this is the the Mori for the the killer. They did a little animation, which is very cool. Um. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> so you like, you like fly up, you grab them, you fly up into the air, and then you fly down and like smash them against the ground. Pretty brutal. <laughs> uh, very cool though, very cool they added in like a whole animation too though. Um, yeah, very very cool. Um, and then they did some score events here too, which is nice. A power score event for downing a survivor with a flight attack, up and away. Um, yeah. So this is still a work in progress for me, I think. But um, yeah, honestly, really incredible concept they made here. Um, again, this is by Ellis Buster or Buster P on Discord. And this was the, the superhero, which I think is very, very cool. Yeah, and <laughs> genuinely, it's really cool they did... Um, all these little animations, they made like these comic book things, they made the animation for the power. Um, yeah, lots of effort put into this, really, really incredible. So yeah, well done to them. Um, go check out that um, uh, concept more over on Discord too. Um, yeah, so that, that's, uh, that's that. <laughs> um, very cool. Again, by Ellis Buster or Buster P on Discord. Um, Okay, we might do like one more. I think my my voice is getting a little bit strained now. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, you made a note in your Gladys thread, KMD. Okay, I'll check that out. Um, uh, oh yeah. So, um, oh, you made a chase theme. Is this um? Is this like safe to listen to on YouTube, uh, KMD? Did you like make it completely yourself? Okay, so circling back to the um, um, the Glados concept by KMD, they've apparently made a chase theme for the character too, 
which is uh, very cool. So we can check that out. Hydrate. I will. I will try to <laughs> in a in a bit. Um. Yeah. KMD. Is this like? Is this safe to? It's you made it yourself. Okay. So this is the 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 theme made by KMD. Um. For their um Glados concept. So we can take a listen now. Okay, so this first music is when GLaDOS is far away. Kind of a jam. Okay, this is when they're approaching now, 24 meters. <laughs> I like it a lot, it sounds great. How does it move? Um, she's like coming down from a portal. Um, like this in this picture. That's how uh, GLaDOS moves here. This is really incredible, you've made all this stuff for it, genuinely. Yeah, it's a jab, isn't it? <laughs> this is when the, the character is close, 12 meters. Now we're going to the, the pre-chase, 8 meters. Oh, I guess pretty intense. Okay, and then into the, the main chase theme. Oh, that, that sounds so good. That, that's genuinely so amazing. That's such a cool theme. It, very fitting. Um, yeah, really, really cool. Um, and again, that was for KMD's um, GLaDOS concept. Um, that's the, the chase music or the, uh, the, the area music and stuff like that. Yeah, genuinely such a jab. <laughs> I'd be too busy vibing to, <laughs> to, uh, to chase. Survivors are too busy jamming. Uh, to run away, you know. Yeah, ge genuinely very incredible concept. Yeah. That that was for the GLaDOS one we did at the start of the stream. I missed out on the uh, the chase music, so we were just circling back there. But yeah, again, incredible job. That's by KMD um, on Discord over here. Um, down here, KMD. Or KMovs D. Lots of people have MOVs in the Discord. Um, which is very um sweet. <laughs> Sharing the MOVs name, you know? Um Yeah, so we'll do one final chapter. Um I don't remember um I did want to look at the Resident Evil 7 one. I think it's by too many one second. I'll pull up the, the one I wanted to look at. Well, I will do that one and then we'll end off there. Okay, so I'll just pull up the chapter and we'll be back in a little, little second. I think we will do a second part to the stream too. Um, because there's honestly just so many cool concepts. Um, I want to include more. I really do. It's just like um, time and also... Um, uh, yeah, my, my, my voice is, uh, um, becoming a bit strained, so. But yeah, again, thank you everyone submitting. Um, please do submit them on the Discord, even if I don't end up, 
um, actually reviewing them myself. Lots of people read them on the Discord. People love to engage with stuff like this. Um, it's a really kind of interactive part of the Discord. Um, so it's well worth joining, again, in the pinned comment there. So, yeah. Um, let me just find this RE7 concept I wanted to read. Um, I'm not sure how far down it was. Aha, there it is. Okay. Okay, so Resident Evil 7. Um, concept. Um... So this is a Resident Evil Chapter 3, and I'm really biased toward this one because I personally would love um, a Chapter 3 for Resident Evil. Um, <coughs> sorry, um, I know people probably don't, but I would really love it <laughs> if they did that. So yeah, a Resident Evil 7 um, chapter concept. And this is by Too Many Re Resolutions IGN. Um... I'm not sure what the name is. I think it's Gian. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, I do like how they've done this as well. They said get ability. Like how likely it is we could even get this to begin with. Um, Capcom and behavior are literally like those cat videos where two cats cuddle together passionately. I agree. This should be a piece of cake. <laughs> There's like 14 Resident Evil characters in DBD. There is, I know. I know it's it's probably not going to happen even, but I don't know. I, I think it would work so well. Either RE7 or RE8, I would love to see. Um... Yeah, okay, so. Um... Chapter 3X? I'm not sure what they mean by that. Do they make three chapters? No, I don't think so. Um, okay. So, characters, Evelyn as the killer. Oh, interesting, they chose Elva. I would have gone with Jack Baker. That's just me. Evelyn as the killer. Evelyn's the main um, villain of RE7. Let me get a picture of Evelyn. Um, that's concepts. Um, Evelyn, RE7. Um, I w I don't want to spoil RE seven. <laughs> um, yeah, this is Evelyn in RE seven. Um, so the killer is Evelyn, and then for the the survivors we have Ethan Winters and Mia Winters. I would really like Ethan as a survivor. Out of all the Resident Evil characters, he's the most um. Uh. He's the most, like, he's, he's the one that fits Survivor the best, to be honest with you. Like, he's, you know, he's a character who's, like, genuinely surviving. Whereas a lot of the other characters are, you know, like, punching boulders and doing stuff like that. <laughs> it's kind of a breeze for them, you know? Um, but yeah. Okay. Oh, 30x means 30-something. I see. Okay. Um... I don't think she's a child. No, she's not. Um, I think she sometimes takes on that form, but I don't think she she's not like the age of a child. I believe. Um, I don't think so. At least I haven't played RE Seven in a while, but I don't. She's not a child. No. Um, okay, so um, Evelyn wears what she wore in the game when she was taken by the Bakers. She is taller since her age is not in child range anymore and looks older. Okay, there you go. Um, so she wouldn't look quite like this, but that's how she does look in RE7. Um, Ethan and Mia Winters wear what they wore in RE7. Okay. Yeah, she's a bioweapon. <laughs> um, then the map, the Baker House. Again, really great setting. a really great setting for horror in general, to be honest. Very cool map in, uh, I think it's set in Louisiana, um, RE7. It's kind of like a swampy area. Um, it's like a a big, like, family house kind of thing. Um, okay, so, and there's variations too. The backyard, with a fraction house available, um, and with Zoe's van, the basement, and then the sunken ship. All great picks. How they were taken and when. 
Um, Evelyn was taken as she was uh, when she was mutated at the age of 24. Okay, so Evelyn's 24 in uh, this version. When she was take, uh, where she was taken at the prime of her power and physical appearance, the entity stopped her aging process, and due to this age, she is also agile and powerful at the same time. Um, Ethan and Mia were taken during the end of the game whilst in the chopper. Um, the chopper had a long flight and both of them got enough rest when suddenly during the night, the chopper suffered a fatal attack, crashing them. When Mia and Ethan came to be, the chopper, Chris and everyone else was gone um, and they were back at the house, but not like before. So it takes Chris... Damn, Chris got taken in two timelines. <laughs> We have RE7 appearance Chris and RE5 appearance Chris. <laughs> that would be good though to have a different um, Chris skin. Am I recording? I'm not uh, recording right now. We're just doing this for the stream. Um, Exo, Matty. Um, basic killer info. 4.6, 32 meter terror radius. And then the power is infectious mold. Evelyn has the power to both create mold monsters, but also to infect nearby survivors to her will and control them. Oh, so she can create kind of like, I'm assuming it's going to be like zombies. A bit like the, the zombies Nemesis has, but you can create kind of these molded creatures. Um, the molded are like one of the main enemies of RE7. Let me get a picture of them too. Um, and they're kind of like these... They're, they're kind of like these... Um, I don't know what you call them, like, uh, well, they look, they're like humanoid kind of things, but they're made out of, um, the mold. Um, so they look, they look a bit like that. So it'd be like that, and they'd probably act a bit like the zombies, I assume. Um, they can infect nearby survivors, um, and she can control survivors by the sound of it. I'm I'm not sure how that would work. That does sound quite powerful though. <laughs> um yeah, you can submit a concept over on the Discord. It's pinned uh in the comments at the moment, aquatic. Um I'm not I'm not going to rank the concepts, but <laughs> it's just meant for like a fun overview. I'm not I don't want to say like, oh, this one's better. I don't know. It seems kind of I don't know. But your concept was amazing, KM dude. <laughs> Um, yeah. Every, one one of the best concepts I've ever read, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. Um, during the start of the match, Evelyn can place down mold with her um withholding control on certain objects, such as generators, pallets, chests, and totems. Um, L3, when you when you press the join Discord link, you need to accept the rules. In rules, you need to react to the rules with um the tick. And when you do that, um, it opens up the rest of the channels. That's just to make sure um, everyone reads the rules, everyone's agreeing before you can go in and talk. You know, it stops, stops um, like trolls and stuff a little bit and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, when a survivor interacts with one of these objects, they will be infected and the mold will be removed, meaning that the other survivors won't be infected. Ah, I see. Okay. I do like the idea of that power. And the idea that uh, that you can like spawn in your own kind of zombie type creatures, because these are a bit like the zombies are quite slow and lumbering, um, but if you let them get close to you, they're usually quite powerful. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. Additionally, when holding down the active ability button, she can create mold monsters and look for pos possessable survivors. Being able to possess survivors with a power would be very cool. Um, but I don't know how well it would work. Also, it might kind of suck as a survivor. Like, you get possessed and then you just, like, can't do anything <laughs> for a while. Um, maybe that could be, like, a mini game or something to, like, struggle back your uh, consciousness or something. I don't know. Um, whilst holding this down, she will have the glimmering view effect, like the one you have when you get visions of Evelyn and RE7. Once the survivor has been infected with the mold, their portrait will slowly have a build-up of an infection and Evelyn's power will start to build up. Once it has been built up, she receives a token. Additionally, that survivor will suffer under certain conditions. When a chase is being started, the survivor suffers under the hindered status effect with, uh, for 2% for 3.5 seconds. 
Um, sometimes they will have visions like an RE7. I do like that. A bit like with Old Doctor. Although I think they removed that because of... I'm, I'm not sure what it was. I think it was because of epilepsy. Um, potential epilepsy. Um, causing epilepsy, I think. Um, but some kind of visions. They could do it without having it like flicker loads and stuff. They could just have them appear, you know? Um, yeah. Um, the survivor can be possessed for 25 seconds. Okay, so that's good. They're not they're not out of the game for too long then. Um, yeah. Um, as said, when holding the power down, Evelyn can see and control infected survivors when she presses right mouse whilst looking at them. She will be transported into the... It transported into that survivor's view in a third person view and can attack other survivors at a speed of four meters per second. Oh, so it's not just for like recon, you can go into a survivor and you can attack whilst inside of them. Okay, that might be a bit too powerful. Um, indeed, epilepsy, because adding accessibility settings is too hard. Yeah, well, I mean, to be fair, the easiest solution to it, though, is to just remove it in case it does happen, right? Obviously, ideally, you want to have accessibility instead, but, um, you know, if not, the better option is to just remove it. Um, hello, I want to thank you because I usually sleep when watching your videos. Your voice is pretty awesome. Thank you. <laughs> right now, I'm in the hospital and your stream is going to make me sleep like a baby. Oh, I'm sorry to hear you're in the hospital, but I'm I'm glad I can help. Um... Roxana. That sounds busted, says Lee. <laughs> it does sound very powerful, doesn't it, as a power? Um, but it would be interesting. This is kind of what people wanted for Legion, originally. Like a power where you can be deceptive and become a survivor and hide within them, you know? I think maybe it would be better off if the possession was more of a recon thing. Like, you can possess a survivor, you can blend in with them, and you can kind of figure out what the survivors are doing without the survivors knowing you're the killer, basically. Um, I think being able to damage whilst in the possessed survivor mode might be a bit too powerful, though. Um, so I'd maybe nerf that down just a little bit. Um, although you do move at 4 meters per second like the survivors, so um, yeah. You could theoretically just force the survivor to walk towards you and hit them when it ends. Says uh, Cinnamon. Yeah, I guess so. What can't this girl do? I mean, you say the Ultra, but this is actually like heavily nerfed down, I would say, from RE7 because she's like insanely powerful in RE7. Um, Charger, we might do, we'll prob we probably will do, in fact, a second stream, and I'll, I'll do my best to look over your, your concept. I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't cover everyone's today, I really am, um, but I'm, I will do my best to cover as many as I can, because I, I really do appreciate how much work people put in and, and things like that, so yeah. Welcome back, Retro. Um, okay, so, um... Okay, survivors can notice when a person is possessed. That does definitely help, I think. Um, that does definitely help, because I think it would be a bit pow a bit too powerful <laughs> um, if they couldn't. Um, Evelyn can see and control in fact... Uh, wait, no, wait a second. Survivors can notice when this is happening. Survivors scream and suddenly begin to stumble towards them. Survivors can counter this with holding a flashlight beam onto the survivor for five seconds, burning away the mold or stunning them with the pallet. Okay, so you can pull people out of the possession mode by shining a flashlight on them or stunning them with a pallet. I think that's a pretty good counter. I would debate there maybe needs to be an kind of an in-trial thing, a bit like Xeno's flamethrowers or the EMPs for singularity. Something like natural spawning, so you don't have to rely on bringing in a flashlight or something. Um, so yeah. Um, hey Azzy, I don't have a concept, but I'd want a water-based killer like a pirate with a parrot who can scope out areas and even mimic things like chase music to throw survivors off. That sounds like a very cool idea, Dan. I would also like a a, a pirate thing or a pirate theme chapter or some kind of like sea theme chapter. Um, yeah, some 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 kind of like nautical, I suppose. Um, okay, uh, so, 
Um, there is no way to view the rate of infection as the infection rate is only shown to Evelyn, yet there are some symptoms that you can use to predict this behaviour. Um, with one token she can create simple moulded monsters that last 1 minute 35 seconds. I think they are going to be a bit like zombies, the, the spawnable monsters. Um, flashbangs? Flashbangs could work, uh, Cinnamon, yeah. Potentially. If they made them spawn in crates around the map and then you could use them to burn off um, uh, burn off the, the mold from survivors. Discord says the message on my post has been deleted. I don't know why does that happen. It might you might have triggered the the auto mod in some way. Um, you can just uh, DM the mod mail and they'll uh, they'll help you out. Um, or just a mod in general. Um, <laughs> um, two tokens she can create moderate molded monsters that last for two minutes thirty five seconds. Three tokens she creates one of the past victims she infested. Um, which is either Jack Baker or Marguerite Baker. Okay, so she can spawn in Jack Baker as like a molded uh, AI helper. That is insanely cool. Probably too complex for DBD. Um, if it, if DBD can't handle more than two zombies in a game at a time, it probably can't handle Jack Baker, but that is a very, very cool idea. Um, all of these mon uh, monsters are controlled by zombie-like AI. Okay. Um, that sweep the area, but also can be controlled by Evelyn. Um, mold creations receive a third person view. Oh, so when you take over the mold, you get you go into the third person. I think that's a cool idea too. Um, they move at four point two, and Jack moves at four point six. Marguerite moves at four point four. I assume Jack and Marguerite have um, slightly different um, abilities when you spawn them in. Um, Molded do not have any special abilities. Jack can grab survivors. Uh, sorry, I scrolled a bit too far there. Um, and punch them forward, injuring them. I think I think a bit like Wesker. That sounds like can grab and punch. That sounds sort of like a Wesker grab. Um, Marguerite can send swarms of insects toward a survivor. Okay, that sounds very cool. Um, vaccines. There are four vaccines in the trial that can be picked up at four suitcases around the ground used two times, meaning eight cures. Okay, so that's like sort of a, a Wesker thing too. Um, Anti-loop. Lastly, Evelyn has the one last ability that uses half a token. The ability can be activated when holding right mouse and once loaded up performs a powerful shockwave like an RE7. Um, where each survivor in a radius of 10 meters gets pushed back and thrown to the ground for enough time to get them in the loop. Oh wow, that sounds very strong. This is a very loaded killer. A very, very cool concept, but I, I worry maybe a bit too loaded with abilities. Um, but yeah, very, I do like that anti-loop ability. That's a little bit unique as well. Um, takes a bit of a different direction from some anti-loop, which is nice. Um... Hey Azzy, would it would would uh would it be cool if you would be a killer in DBD? You'll have your own voice lines, especially okay pass. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, if I was to go into the realm, I I would I would prefer to be a survivor. I think. I I think I would get I would be I would feel far too guilty as a killer. <laughs> um. So cosmetics. Um. And then they've listed a bunch of cosmetics here. So. Uh, different cosmetics, like the... I'm not sure what this one is, when his daughter went missing. Oh, his RE8 outfit, okay. Um, Clancy Jarvis? Wants the camera guy for an internet show. That's one of the characters you see in the tapes in RE7, I believe. Um, Mia's RE8 outfit, Zoe Baker, and then Rose also as a cosmetic. And then they say perks work in progress. So yeah, that's a really, really cool concept. I like how they included that. I like how Jack was, was included still, even though he's not the main killer. I like how it's almost like a a special kind of creature you can spawn after um, doing well with them for a certain amount of time. Um, yeah. <laughs> they, they did say at the top, yes, I know, too much content. Um... <laughs> Um, yeah, but I do think that would be, um, 
a very cool chapter. So that was um, the RE7 chapter by Too Many Re- Resolutions, IGN, or uh, I think they're called GN is their name um, on Discord. I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for the stream, I think. We saw a bunch of really cool concepts today. If you want to share your concept, please do go over to the Discord. Um, you can click it with the pinned link at the moment in the comments. Um, I'll also pin it down in the description for anyone watching on the VOD. You can come over to the Discord. We have a whole section um, of the Discord where you can post your DBD ideas. They look at all these ideas. There's lists and lists of people posting um, different concepts and things like that. So please do come along and um, post your concepts into the Discord um, in the DBD ideas tab. Um, so yeah, um, I do hope you enjoyed. We'll try and aim for a part two next Friday. Um, and yeah, that, that, that's going to do it. <laughs> um, I hope everyone enjoyed. Um, it's really nice again. Streaming, I enjoy it lots. It's nice interacting more directly. And it's really cool um, doing these sort of overviews of things um, people in the community have created. Really incredible stuff today. Um, Appreciate everyone who um, made the concepts, everyone who watched, um, and everyone who interacts over on Discord too. It's really nice to um, have that all. So yeah, um, I do hope you enjoyed. Thanks, and goodbye.